वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन हाउ आर यू ऑल एवरी वन फाइन लास्ट क्लास वी वे डूइंग फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट चैप्टर टूडे विल नॉट कंटिन्यू दैट बिकॉज विल टेक अ न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर वन तो विल स्टार्ट चैप्टर नंबर वन टूडे वट इज चैप्टर नंबर वन कॉन्सेप्चुअल फ्रेमवर्क फॉर फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग अंडर इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ फ्रेमवर्क फ्रेमवर्क मीन्स रोड मैप और एनी अप्रोच बेस्ड ऑन वीज इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड विल बी डेवलप करेक्ट ना तो इट मीन्स आईसीआई हैज इशूड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट फ्रेमवर्क फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड करेक्ट फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड ना वन क्वेश्चन विल बी इन योर माइंड सर वाई वी आर डूइंग दिस चैप्टर राइट नाउ मीन्स वाई नॉट इनिशियली द रीजन इज दैट दिस चैप्टर has used many terms which we which we which you were not knowing initially but after completion of many indian accounting standard you are used to that terms so it will be very easy for me to explain that terms right now while going through this chapter second point this is a totally revised chapter means before means last attempt for up to last attempt there was some other chapter the name of the chapter was framework for the preparation and presentation of financial statement under indian accounting standard now the name has been changed and the entire chapter has been also changed means it is an amendment amendment means important from examination point of view whenever there is an amendment because this amendment will be applicable from may 22 and onward exam so of course it will be an important from examination point of view now whether a question will be asked or will not be asked that i don't know but any amendment is important from examination point of view correct but this chapter is totally theoretical totally theoretical and it is based on what very basis means it is based on fundamentals of what accounting means if you read this chapter by your own you will be able to understand if you go through this chapter by your own you will be able to understand and you don't require my help but i know that you will not read therefore i need to read on your behalf correct however by reading some explanation will require that i will give correct but very simple chapter to understand not difficult chapter can we start yes we can start correct so the name of the chapter is what conceptual framework for financial reporting under indian accounting standard you can see it has been divided into many topics topics topic 1 topic 2 etc and how many pages total total number of pages 27 pages in this chapter however it is more than 27 pages means i have compressed this chapter from examination point of view means what is required that i have retained what is not required that i have removed correct i hope you are understanding yes sir so let us start this conceptual framework for financial instrument sorry this conceptual framework for financial reporting under india is not a standard it is not a standard so one clarification has been given that this is not a part of indian accounting standard it is not a part of indian accounting standard and it will not override the requirement of any indian accounting standard means this conceptual framework cannot override any requirement of indian accounting standard means in case of any differences which will prevail conceptual framework will not prevail indian accounting standard will prevail understood so it does not override any standard or any requirement in any standard correct therefore this does not form part of set of standard pronounced by pronounced by standard setter means standard setter means who has formed that indian accounting standard correct yes sir now who has developed this conceptual framework icai so icai has developed this conceptual framework under india's corresponding to corresponding to iasb iasb i stand for international whenever there is i i means international correct so international accounting standard board conceptual framework 2018 means it just a copy paste of international account international conceptual framework icai has only copy paste and has developed this 
conceptual framework which is required for the development of india is correct yes sir so what is the purpose of this conceptual framework what is the purpose of this conceptual framework so some purpose has been given let us read it so first purpose it assist ici in formulation of indian accounting standard so whenever indian accounting standard will be developed by ici ici will take the help of this conceptual framework to develop any indian accounting standard correct formulation to be based on consistent concept can you see there should be some consistent concept based on which some india should be developed so it will provide the consistent concept based on which indian accounting standard should be developed yes sir it assist preparer to develop consistent accounting policies when no india applies to a particular transaction event so i hope you remember i hope you remember india said india said has given has given that whenever there is whenever there is no specific indian accounting standard for a transaction event then what need to be done so as per india said in that case management need to form accounting policy based on their own judgment but the judgment should be based on some source document the source document can be mandatory or it can be optional so they have given some mandatory source document in that first we need to apply the indias which is related to the similar transaction event i hope you i have given some example that grant received from non government agencies so for that indias 20 is not applicable but indias 20 has given accounting policy for similar transaction therefore we can apply indias 20 as per indias ha huh. if there is no related indias also then we'll apply what conceptual framework then we'll apply conceptual framework understood so as per india said whenever there is no indian accounting standard for a specific transaction event then we can develop accounting policy based on conceptual framework correct so that is only given it assist preparer to develop consistent accounting policy when no india applies to a particular transaction event or when an india allow a choice of accounting policy a choice of accounting policy so of course in there many indias has given option for accounting policy the best example which i can give right now is cost model or revaluation model for property plan and equipment an intangible asset for subsequent recognition now whether to follow cost model or whether to follow revaluation model for that we can apply what conceptual framework understood yes sir then it assists all the party to understand indias correct and interpretation of indias so how to interpret indias will be also based on conceptual framework understood yes sir once again a clarification nothing in the conceptual framework under indias override any indias or any requirement of any indias means whatever we are doing it cannot override any indias or any requirement of indias correct yes sir this point you have understood correct introduction over topic number 2 objectives of general purpose financial reporting what is the objective of general purpose financial reporting what is the objective bata what is the objective of general purpose financial reporting to provide financial information so to provide financial information about whom about reporting entity to provide financial information about whom about reporting entity that is useful to that will be useful to the user of financial statement who can be the user of financial statement useful to existing and potential investor existing means shareholders potential means who want to invest in the company yes sir to lender means financial any bank who has given loan and other creditor other creditor can you see these are these are the primary user of the financial statement primary i hope when we have done indias 1 we have done the meaning of materiality in that i have used the term primary user primary user means who will rely on the financial information given by the financial statement correct for making any conclusion so these are the primary user of the financial statement so who are the primary user we can say the shareholders and potential investor the financer and other creditor other 
creator understood so that is useful to this person in making decision relating to providing resources to the entity correct so this is the basic objective of general purpose financial reporting correct now this decision when i am saying in making decision so which decision normally this party will take some decision which decision correct yes whether to make investment or not so this decision involve decision about buying selling holding equity or debt instrument equity or debt instrument now you know the term equity and debt instrument from which chapter from financial instrument chapter understood correct so buying selling holding equity or debt instrument yes sir providing or settling loans and other forms of credit other forms of credit yes sir and exercising right to vote exercising right to vote or otherwise influence management action that affect the use of entity's economic resource so normally can i say based on financial information will vote also correct now suppose there is a resolution of dividend declaration correct now i hope you are understanding so will vote based on the profit will be vote based on the profit profit will be from what financial statement only yes sir so these are the mainly decision correct now you can understand this you can also understand by your own it does not require my help correct but then also i will do it because i have taken fees from you now what is the limitation of general purpose financial reporting there are many limitation correct means can i say financial state financial statement does not provide any information about future correct now this is the first and very important limitation so what they want to say they do not and cannot provide all the information they do not and cannot provide all the information that existing and potential investor vendor and other creditor need so it does not provide all the information which this person needs correct and are not designed to show the value of reporting entity can i say with financial statement we are not able to cal calculate the value of entity ha that financial statement information can be used to calculate the value but that will not show the value of the entity understood yes sir so are not designed to show the value of reporting entity but they provide information to estimate the value of reporting entity means prima facie from the financial statement can you find out the value of reporting entity no but can you say whatever information has been given in that financial statement from that we can estimate the value of the reporting entity i hope you are understanding yes sir and are not primarily directed to other party means the information is not relevant for other party for example regulator and the members of public at large correct na means they, they can be many other user of financial statement so it does not primarily directed to other parties such as regulator and members of public understood this these are the some limitations some limitation when i am when i am saying it is not primarily directed to other party such as members to public at large means it does not give it does not give other information which may be required for the members of public at large for example for example if you know about social benefit and cost analysis social benefit and cost analysis can i say any every entity provide some social benefit for example employment generation correct now so any entity will provide some social benefit to public at large but to provide that social benefit they will incur some social cost also for example pollution created so the analysis of social benefit and cost is not given in the general purpose financial reporting understood now so it might happen that public at large required that information but that is not provided by financial reporting general purpose financial reporting got it yes sir limitation understood now information provided by general purpose financial report what are the information provided there are two basic two major information one is financial position information second is financial performance information correct means financial information one is financial position when i am saying financial position so it means it means what asset liability equity asset liability equity so economic resource of the entity economic resource of the entity means what asset economic resource of the entity means asset 
claims mean to what? Claims means what? Liability, liability, and equity also you can say, correct? Equity also claim, but there is no obligation to pay. There is no obligation to pay. So claim include liability. Understood? So this is the financial position, and second financial information which is provided by the financial statement is the effect of transaction and other event that changes entity's economic resource and claim. Effect of transaction. Can I say effect of transaction will determine the income and expense, income and expense or cash flow or distribution and contribution, distribution to what? Shareholders? Correct. So effect of transaction and other event that changes the entity's economy, resource and claim. It means financial performance. Financial performance means what? Statement of PL. Internationally, we call it comprehensive income. Correct. Therefore, they have used the word comprehensive income. Comprehensive income is PL plus OCI. Comprehensive income is PL plus OCI. Understand why I have taken this chapter today? Because initially you were not knowing what is the meaning of comprehensive income. So I could, I cannot start this chapter initially. Correct? Yes, sir. So financial performance, comprehensive income, cash flows, cash flows, and changes not resulting from financial performance. Any changes not resulting from financial performance? Can you give me some example? That is contribution and distribution, contribution from and distribution to owner. That is not a change from financial performance. That will change the equity, but not due to the change, not due to the effect of what financial performance. Yes, sir. So you can add on. This is nothing but statement of changes in equity. This is nothing but a statement of cash flow. This is nothing but a statement of comprehensive income. You know, statement of comprehensive income understood. In India, we call it statement of profit and loss. Yes, sir. Got it. Yes, sir. Then topic number three: qualitative characteristics of useful financial information. Qualitative. So there are two qualitative characteristics. One is relevance. Relevance. And second is what faith. Second is what faithful representation. Faithful representation. Representation. Can you say any information provided by financial statements should be relevant? Correct now, and it should faithfully represent all the information. Correct now, of course, this is you know from much fun relevance and faithful representation. Correct now, let us read what they have given. So can I say if financial information is to be useful, it must be relevant and faithfully represent what it purport to represent. Means what it required to represent that is only given. Correct now means the information provided by financial statements should be relevant and it must be it must faithfully represent all the information. Yes, sir. The usefulness of financial information is enhanced if it is comparable. If it is comparable, verifiable, timely, and understandable. Means can I say it will be relevant. And it will be it will faithfully represent only when if it is comparable with the financial statement of other entity. If the information can be verified, if the information can be verified with all the disclosures, correct now or assumption taken, it should be timely means we should give the timely information whenever required, and it should be understandable. It should be understandable. Relevance, of course. Now, if you want, I can read. Correct now, not required. If you want, I can read. Correct now. So what they say about relevance? Relevant financial information is capable of making a difference in the decision made by users. Correct. Information may be capable of making a difference in a decision even if some user choose not to take advantage of it or are already aware of it from other sources. Correct now means it might happen. Can is them at management level the information might be known to them, but can is it they do not disclose this information to the outsider. I hope you understand me. The information may be capable of making a difference in a decision even if some user choose not to take advantage of it or already aware of it from other sources. Correct? Yes, sir. Financial information is capable of making a difference in decision if it has predictive value. Predictive value or confirmatory value or both. 
तो सर व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ प्रिडक्टिव वैल्यू व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ कंफर्मेटरी वैल्यू यू नो अबाउट प्रिडक्टिव प्रिडक्टिव तो व्हाट दे से फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन हैज अ प्रिडक्टिव वैल्यू प्रिडक्टिव वैल्यू इफ इट कैन बी यूज्ड एज एन इनपुट इफ द इंफॉर्मेशन कैन बी यूज्ड एज एन इनपुट इफ द इंफॉर्मेशन कैन बी यूज्ड एज एन इनपुट to process employed by the user to predict the future outcome so if whatever information has been given in the financial statement that can be used to predict future outcome then it means the information given by the financial statement has some predictive value some predictive value correct yes sir means can i say information whatever has been given in the financial statement must have predictive value correct what is the meaning of confirmative value Financial information has confirmative value if it provide feedback about previous evaluation. Previous evaluation means whatever you have estimated previously, for that for that feedback is also provided by the information in current condition. Correct. So financial information has confirmative value if it provide feedback feedback about means it confirm or changes previous evaluation. for example we have taken we have estimated provision last year so actual outcome will come in this year so actual outcome will confirm the previous estimation so if the actual outcome can confirm the previous estimation means whatever information we have taken that has confirmatory value also confirmatory value also understood it means financial information is capable what they want to say is capable of making a difference in decision is capable of making a difference decision if it has predictive confirmatory value or both keywords this is a keyword for relevance correct understood this point you have understood materiality already i have defined where i have defined a information become material if omitting misstating or obscuring you remember where i have defined it in days 1 under indias one we have done this same definition so an information is matter if omitting obscure misstating or obscuring it could reasonably be expected to influence decision that the primary user of general purpose financial report make on the basis of those report which provide financial information about a specific reporting entity so already i have defined it i am not going to discuss it much you can add on refer what in ds1 already i have done a detailed discussion on this correct refer in ds1 right so what is the faithful representation can is it to be perfectly faithfully represented means faithful representation a depiction would have been would have three characteristics what are three characteristics for faithful representation first is complete can is information given in the financial statement should be complete should be complete then it should be neutral neutral means what it should be it should be without without it should be not based on the personal bias of management yes sir it should be neutral free from any error it should be free from any error understood i hope you understood this complete neutral free from error you are doing from bachpan means ca foundation also we have done this qualitative characteristic correct yes sir you can read it enhancing qualitative characteristics how can we enhance qualitative characteristics if it provide this features first is comparability comparability second is verifiability correct then what timeliness and then understandability do you want me to read understood now i think you have understood financial statement must provide comparable information it should provide verifiable information which can be verified it should provide the information based on particular time and understandability correct got it can you read by your own yes sir i hope this you can do correct but you need to only from examination point of view i don't know they will ask what are the what are the element for enhancing quality characteristic this type of question will not ask will not be asked at ca final level they will not ask direct theoretical question but they may ask some case study based question they may ask some case study based question understood correct then topic number 4 financial statement and the reporting entity 
तो वट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट वट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इज टू प्रोवाइड फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट रिपोर्टिंग एंटिटी रिपोर्टिंग एंटिटीज वट वाट रिपोर्टिंग एंटिटीज एसेट लाइबिलिटी एंड इक्विटी रिपोर्टिंग एंटिटीज एसेट लाइबिलिटी एंड इक्विटी एंड इनकम एंड एक्सपेंस मीन दीज आर दाइव एलिमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट If somebody asks you what is the five elements of financial statement, it are what liability, asset, equity, income, and expense. Correct. So can you see is to provide financial information about reporting entities, asset, liability, equity, and income and expense that is useful to the user of financial statement in assessing the prospect for future net cash inflow to the reporting entity and management stewardship of the entity's economic resource. Means simple. In simple word, I can see the objective of financial statement is to provide financial information about five elements of financial statement to the user of financial statement. Got it? Got it? To the user of financial statement to provide financial information about asset, liability, equity, income, and expense to the user of financial statement by giving a statement of financial position and a statement of what profit and loss. Correct? And also a statement of cash flow. Got it? such financial information is provided in the balance sheet by recognizing asset liability and equity correct in the statement of profit and loss by recognizing income and expense lo do you want my help to explain this correct now in this when itca foundation student normally i don't teach but when i start i start with this only in ca foundation correct now and in other statement note other statement means it can be statement of cash flow it can be statement of changes in equity it can be notes to account correct by presenting and disclosing information about by presenting and disclosing the information about recognize asset liability equity income and expense recognize asset liability equity income and expense including information about their nature and about the risk arising from those recognized assets and liability mean disclosure required correct assets and liability that have not been recognized so there may be some assets and liability which are not recognized for example contingent liability contingent asset for which also information is required to be disclosed correct including information about their nature and about the risk arising from them cash flow contribution from holder of equity claim and distribution to them correct means can i say these are given in notes this for this we prepare statement of cash flow and for this we prepare statement of changes in equity got it yes sir what do you want should i continue or can you read by your own you only say no sir please read now correct and of course we need to also disclose the method assumption and judgment if you remember indias one indias one also require the disclosure about the method assumption taken for the preparation and presentation of financial statement so method assumption judgment used in estimating the amount presented or disclosed and changes in those method assumption and judgment understood so this will be also disclosed where in notes to account objective we understood correct now can you see we are preparing financial statement for a reporting period for a reporting period what is the meaning of reporting period reporting period can you say financial statement are prepared for a specific period of time and to help you user of financial statement to identify and assess changes and trend financial state changes and trend financial statement also provide comparative information for at least one preceding reporting period correct means information about possible future transaction and other possible future event is included in the financial statement if it correct to can you say this specific period of time is what reporting period means what will be the reporting period it will consist of how many month that is not given means we all know that reporting period can be equal to more than or less than 12 month means a 6 month can be also considered as reporting period if the management want to prepare finance financial statement for 6 month every 6 month i hope you understanding 
so this should be a specific period of time which will be defined by the management only but normally in india as per companies act it will be what one financial year which is ending which will end on what 31st march so from companies act point of view it will be one financial year correct so a specific period of time will be one financial year from companies act point of view correct so financial statement are prepared for a specific period of time that is a reporting period and to help user of financial statement to identify and assess the changes and trend correct financial statement also provide comparative information for at least one preceding at least one preceding reporting period now as per india's we know that minimum comparative financial information need to be given but can i say we can give some additional financial statement also for comparison so at least we need to provide comparative figure for one preceding period then this point is also important information about possible possible future transaction and other possible future event is included in the financial statement if it relate to the entity's assets or liability including unrecognized asset or liabilities or equity that is existed at the end of reporting period or during the reporting period or to income and expense for the reporting period means it relate to any possible future transaction or possible future event will be also included in the financial statement if it relate to the entity's assets or liability we have done india stain event occurring after reporting period if it provide condition existing on reporting period should be adjusted correct now and if the if if it does not provide any evidence of the condition existing on the reporting period and disclosures should be given disclosures should be given that only they want to say that information about future transaction and other future possible event should be also included in the financial statement if it relate to entities assets liability and is useful to the user of financial statement is useful to the user of financial statement got it any doubt no doubt going concern assumption you want me to read let us read because if i will not read you will can file a case against me correct financial statement are normally prepared on the assumption that reporting entity is a going concern correct and will continue in operation in the foreseeable future and hence it is assumed that entity has neither the intention nor need to enter liquidation or to cease trading however we know that if financial statement are not prepared on non going concern sorry if financial statement are not prepared on going concern basis fact need to be disclosed correct that is given if such an intention or need exist the financial statement may have to be prepared on a different basis we have done under indias 1 as well as indias 10 correct if so financial statement describe the basis used means what will be the basis of preparing financial statement when the entity is not a going concern that need to be also disclosed already we have covered under indias 1 and indias 10 yes sir reporting entity so who are reporting entity reporting entity is an entity that is required or choose to prepare financial statement correct a reporting entity they have not said entity reporting entity so a reporting entity who is required to prepare financial statement means any entity who is preparing financial statement will be the reporting entity a reporting entity can be a single entity single entity or a portion of entity a portion of an entity a portion of an entity or can comprise more than one entity or can comprise more than one entity means we can also prepare financial statement for a portion of the entity a portion of a entity correct means can i say if i am saying parent and subsidiary they together become one entity so one subsidiary can be a portion of what group entity a subsidiary company can be a portion of group entity i hope you understanding correct so a reporting entity can be a single entity 
or a portion of an entity or can comprise of more than one entity now what they are saying a reporting entity is not necessarily a legal entity means entity may be legal or may not be a legal entity in the eyes of law in the eyes of law understood means when i am saying group entity is a reporting entity but it is not a legal entity from the eyes of companies act correct na a group entity is not a single entity in the eyes of law na that comprise of many legal entities correct yes sir so if a reporting entity comprise both parent and its subsidiaries reporting entities financial statement are referred as consolidated financial statements i hope this also you have understood no explanation required means for a group entity the financial statement will be known as consolidated financial statement if a reporting entity is only a parent entity means it is only a parent entity then reporting entity's financial statement are referred as what are referred as what as per this conceptual framework it is unconsolidated financial statement however it is nothing but separate financial statement separate financial statement so you can also write down this is nothing but separate financial statement as per india's 27 as per india's 27 now you only say if a parent company is preparing their financial statement it will be known as unconsolidated financial statement or separate financial statement separate financial statement why because we cannot override the requirement of indias so indias 27 says separate financial statement so it will be separate financial statement we cannot call it what unconsolidated financial statement but we understood it is nothing but unconsolidated only correct if a reporting entity comprise two or more entity two or more entity that are not all linked by a parent subsidiary relationship means there is no parent subsidiary relationship understood so if a reporting entity comprise two or more entities that are not all linked by parent subsidiary relationship the reporting entity's financial statement are referred as combined financial statement combined financial statement combined financial statement means if a reporting entity comprise two or more entity but they are not parent and subsidiary means it can be investor and associate at amount it can be investor and associate right now we have not done that means it can be parent and subsidiary it can be investor and associate or it can be joint venturer and joint venture because you all know you till now we have not started consolidated financial statement you might be finding it difficult so difficulty and understanding this So when I am saying consolidated financial statement, this become consolidated financial statement. The question is that when we combine the financial statement of investor and associate, what it will be known? As per India's, it is known as consolidated financial statement only. As per India's, as per India's 28 coming soon in your life. But as per this, they are saying combined financial statement. Shall I go okay? Correct now. So if a reporting entity comprises two or more entities that are not all linked by parent subsidiary relationship they are reporting entities means the reporting entities financial statement in that case will be referred as what combined financial statement but as per india's 28 it is known as what consolidated financial statement only why we will understand nevertheless parent may be required or choose to prepare unconsolidated financial statement in addition to consolidated financial statement however we know that as per company act requirement a parent company need to prepare both separate financial statement and consolidated financial statement understood so what they are saying if there is a parent company so they need to prepare unconsolidated as well as consolidated financial statement but unconsolidated financial statement is prepared in addition to what consolidated financial statement means as per this conceptual framework and as per india's both which is mandatory which is consolidated or unconsolidated consolidated financial statement is mandatory and unconsolidated financial statement is prepared in addition to what consolidated financial statement got it yes sir done this also done now topic number 
elements of financial statement this become important from examination point of view elements what are the five elements asset liability equity income and expense so asset liability equity related to financial position related to reporting entities financial position and income and expense related to reporting entities financial performance now we need to understand what is the meaning of asset liability equity income and expense this all thing we should do in at ca foundation level what is the meaning of asset what is the meaning of liability correct however with our previous classes we have done the meaning of asset liability equity correct income and expense everything i have defined somewhere everything i have defined somewhere but not together wherever required i have given the definition correct now so let us understand information provided by general purpose financial report elements of financial statement definition or description correct first we'll do the definition then we'll do the explanation of the definition chalega so information provided by general economic resource information can i say it will be represented by asset so any economic resource of a reporting entity is represented by asset what is the meaning of asset a present economic resource a present economic resource correct controlled by the entity a present economic resource controlled by the entity as a result of past event as a result of past event can you repeat with me a present economic resource controlled by an entity as a result of past event is a asset so this present economic resource which is controlled this present economic resource if controlled by the entity will become an asset will become a asset correct understood so what is the meaning of economic resource what is the meaning of economy resource now one doubt will come so what is economy resource so economy resource is a right is a right this right word is very important i hope with the financial instrument chapter you have understood the value of the meaning means you have understood the importance of the meaning of right in financial instrument chapter we have done financial asset is a contract or right contract or right so economic resource is a right correct the so economic resource is right that has potential to produce economic benefit that is potential to produce economic benefit that is potential to produce economic benefit we'll do the explanation of this definition once again don't worry but i hope you have understood the meaning of asset can you repeat with me the meaning of asset asset means a present the first what is present economic resource controlled by entity as a result of past event now will you forget this definition in interview they will ask what is the meaning of asset you will say building plant and machinery are bolna re they will ask what is the meaning what is asset what do you say a present economic resource controlled by the entity as a result of past event so what is the meaning of economic resource they will can throw another question the economic resource is a right that has the potential to produce ya to provide economic benefit so what is the meaning of claims means information provided by general purpose financial report is second information claim so claim can be in terms of liability or equity equity is also claim correct so liability what is the meaning of liability it is a present obligation present obligation remember present obligation in the year 37 it is a present obligation of the entity to transfer present obligation of an entity to transfer an economic resource as a result of past event so present obligation of an entity to transfer economic resource as a result of past event to transfer economic resource to transfer economic resource i hope you have understood so asset means present economic resource liability means present obligation to transfer economic resource once again asset means present economic resource liability means present obligation to transfer economic resource 
Got it? Yes, sir. What is the meaning of equity? Equity we have done taza taza where? In days 32. Correct? What? The residual interest in the asset of the entity after deducting all liability. That only we have done. The residual interest in the asset of the entity after deducting all its liability. That become what? Equity. However, can you say for this detailed discussion already we have done under India's 32? Detailed discussion we have done there. Correct? Equity detailed discussion we have done. Yes, sir. Then, information provided may be changes in economy resource and claim reflecting financial performance. So, it will be income and expense. Income and expense. So, what is income? What is expense? Can you say income means increase in asset, increase in asset or decrease in liability? Any increase in asset or decrease in liability that changes, yeah, that result in increase in equity. So, income will increase equity. Means there are dual concept now. Dual aspect concept. So, increase in, increase in income means what? Increase in asset. So, whenever asset is increasing, what will happen? Your equity will, your equity will increase. Correct. Or decrease in liability, there can be decrease in liability. So decrease in liability that result in increase in equity. Decrease in liability is also what gain. So that will increase your profit. Increase your profit means what? It will increase your retained earning. Understood, yes sir. Other than those relating to contribution from holder of equity claims. Other than contribution from the holder of equity. Holder of equity. Correct. Means any contribution means cash received means increase in asset and increase in equity. Understood? Means if you are receiving contribution from owner, what is the journal entry you are doing? Cash account debit to capital. So increase in asset and increase in equity. Well, this is not income. This is not income. Even though it is an increase in asset which correspondingly increase the equity, but this is not a income. So they have excluded from a definition of income any contribution from equity holder understood yes sir so income is increase in asset or decrease in liability that result in increase in equity other than those relating to contribution from the holder of equity claims expense reverse definition expense means what decrease in asset or increase in liability that result in decrease in equity other than relating to other than relating to distribution to the holder of equity claim, distribution, distribution is dividend. Correct now, dividend distribution is not a expense. It will not be transferred to PL, it will be transferred to retained earning. Means in Bachman, believe me, when I was in class 11, 12, that time also we have done dividend. I think in 11, 12 we have not done. Na? 11, 12 we have done dividend. Company chapter, you have not done, I have done. Correct. Or it might be in CA Foundation. CA Foundation dividend and our teacher uses the dividend will be transferred to PL appropriation account. And interest will be transferred to PL. Lot of confusion. Why? Why? Dividend will be transferred to PL appropriation account and interest will be transferred to what? PL. Lot of doubt was there. And most of the students used to do mistake. Dividend also they will say what? PL only. Baba. But now I hope, I hope you have understood. Interest is an expense. Dividend to equity shareholders is not an expense. Is not an expense. Understood? Have you understood? Yes, sir. I hope the meaning you have understood asset, liability, equity, income and expense. Means when we have done grant. Now you only say grant is an income or is not an income? Nalayak. We have done entire India's 20 and you are saying grant is not an income. Grant we have transferred to PL only. Whether grant was transferred to equity. Grant was transferred to what? PL. Why? Because it will meet the definition of income. Let us understand. Grant means increase in asset. Either it will be monetary asset or non-monetary asset. Either in cash or in kind. Increase in asset. Or decrease in liability. Waiver of loan. We have done waiver of loan, na? In India's 20, we have done waiver of loan also. 
so either increase in asset or decrease in liability that result in increasing equity only and that is not related to contribution from equity holder because grant is from government not from equity holder and therefore it will meet the definition of income and therefore india 20 says each and every grant will be transferred to pl it will not be transferred to retained earning got it got it are bol na re yes sir correct now definition of asset now analysis of definition whatever we have done we have understood but more explanation you have understood the meaning of asset can you repeat with me without saying uh, asset is a present economic resource controlled by entity as a result of past event what is the meaning of economic resource economic resource is a right right that have potential to that have potential to provide economic benefit no i stop you also stop why you stop because just write this chapter i am also doing for the first time i and you are same i and you are same and this definition i am also doing for the first time previously we don't used to give this definition correct now i hope you are understanding so for this chapter i and you are same but when i read now i break all the points and try to concentrate means believe me this chapter for the first time i read last day only because today i need to teach so for the first time i read last day i came to the class believe this fact i am saying but due to my past experience i have the ability to teach in class correct now so what i am saying can you repeat with me please because the definition is very important what they are saying an asset is a present economy resource controlled by the entity as a result of past event economy resource is a right that has a potential to provide or produce economic benefit now the question is sir what is this right what is this right correct right means what so what they say right right have the potential to produce economic benefit that can be in two forms that can be in how many forms two form take many forms means normally two forms right that correspond to an obligation of another party right that correspond to an obligation of another party means my right become your obligation means if i right to receive cash you have an obligation to pay cash so right which correspond to an obligation of another party correct second right that do not correspond don't read till i read because once you read before me entire interest gone because i'll be asking some question now right they do not correspond to an obligation of another party can you give me any right which do not correspond to an obligation of another party huh bol huh rou asset very good a simple right to use property plan and equipment means when i purchase a property plan and equipment i can use it because it is under my control but it does not correspond to any obligation of other party understood i hope you have understood so right that have a potential to produce economic benefit may come in many form one of the form is what right that correspond to an obligation of another party for example right to receive cash right to receive cash right to receive goods or services my question to you a right to receive cash will be a financial asset it is not a financial asset a right to receive goods and services is a financial asset it is not a financial asset huh so confused na right to receive cash is a financial asset as per india study do a right to receive goods or services is not a financial asset so right now we are doing the meaning of asset not the meaning of financial asset understood asset can be financial or not a financial asset understood so means before starting financial asset we should do the meaning of asset correct now but i have not done because that time you were not knowing many terms now it is very easy to explain this it is very easy to explain this na yes sir so right that correspond to an obligation of other party for example right to receive cash right to receive goods or services right to exchange economy resource with another entity on favorable terms remember right to 
there is a contractual right to exchange financial asset or financial liability with another entity under conditions which are favorable to the entity derivative instrument means right to exchange economic resource with another party on favorable terms means this will become a derivative asset derivative asset correct yes right to benefit from an obligation of another party right to benefit from an obligation of another party to transfer economy resource if a specific uncertain future event occur oh my god have you understood this point right to benefit from an obligation of another party to transfer an economy resource if specified uncertain future event occur we have done one one means this point we have done in what compound financial instrument optionally convertible debenture option contingent depends upon future outcome whether the debenture or the holder will opt for redemption or conversion correct now so right now it is what if a specified uncertain future event occur so can you see if they opt means if debenture means debenture holder opt for what redemption so they have a right to receive economy resource correct now so if debenture holder opted for redemption so they have a right or not they have a right they have a right to benefit from an obligation of another party because that time it will become an obligation of another party and therefore under india study to we have said that if, if it is dependent on an even which is contingent it will be initially classified as what financial liability if you remember correct yes sir so right to benefit from an obligation of another party to transfer an economy resource if specified uncertain future event occur got it understood if you want to write down write down this is nothing but financial asset this is not a financial asset fa means what fixed asset now we don't use the term fixed asset fixed asset the word has been deleted from our life we don't use fixed asset in our life now deleted even though in ca inter it is not used in ca inter you have used fixed asset in balance sheet you have used fixed asset that is gone ha huh? now it is not fixed asset fixed asset this is not a financial asset you can have this is nothing but derivative asset you can add on for example example add on optionally convertible debenture optionally convertible debenture correct right they do not correspond to an obligation of another party very simple example right over physical object such as pp or inventories right to use intellectual property intellectual property right to use intellectual property yes sir rou asset will be also one example you have given the best example only rou asset got it yes sir now what was the meaning an economy resource is right right you have understood there are two types of right that has a potential to provide economic benefit now what is the meaning of potential to provide what is the meaning of potential to provide the so potential to produce economic benefit potential to produce so how will understand it has a potential to produce economic benefit so economy resource is right that has a potential to produce economic benefit a right meet the definition of an economy resource a right meet the definition of an economic resource and hence can be an asset and hence can be an asset correct even if the probability that it will produce economic benefit is low understood means the point is that if the probability that it will produce economic benefit is low for example in case of contingent asset in case of contingent asset in case of contingent asset we have done that if employee is virtually certain it will be recognized as an asset if employee is not virtually certain but it is what probable then it is not an asset it is a contingent asset correct 
means what do you want to say a right can meet the definition of economic resource and hence it will be an asset even if the probability that will produce economic benefit is low understood however now the second para this can be understood with second para however low probability might affect decision about low probability might affect decision about means if there is a low probability probability to produce economic benefit then it will affect decision about what information to provide about that asset how to provide that information and whether the asset to be recognized or not to be recognized means right now this conceptual framework is not discussing about recognition whether we should recognize or whether we should not recognize that will be based on what in the year 37 we have done that contingent asset will not be recognized but what they are saying in right can meet the definition of economy resource and hence can be an asset if the probability to produce economic benefit is low however low probability to produce economic benefit may affect the decision about what information to be given how to provide that that information and their recognition and their recognition understood this point have you understood this point i hope you are understanding initially believe me this chapter i would have taken in the first day you would have died you would have died na correct na now you are at comfort stage yes sir we are understanding why you are teaching we can do by our own correct control now control means we have understood an economy is right right we have understood that has a potential to produce economic benefit we have, we have understood but and as it is a present economy resource control to what is the meaning of control means there are three word right potential to produce economic benefit and control and control so control means what an entity controls an economy resource if it has if it has present ability to direct the use of economy resource present ability to direct the use of economy resource present ability means they have a ability to use the resource can is either they can use it or they can allow other person to use it either they can use it in their own activity or they will allow other person to use in their activities correct now so they have a present ability to direct the use of economy resource that is it has the right to deploy the economy resource in its activity in their own activity or to allow another party to deploy the economy resource in that another party's activities got it so can you say control means if it has present ability to direct the use of economy resource and and means both the condition need to be satisfied and obtain economic benefit that may flow from it after using it they must derive economic benefit na understood now if you are using it but if you are not deriving economic benefit so what is the use correct an entity control an economic resource if it has present ability to direct the use of economic resource and obtain economic benefit that may flow from it that may flow from it understood and because of this reason now any leased asset will become an rou asset even though it is on a operating lease as per inter level means now there is no operating lease means if i have taken this calculator from you suppose this is not my calculator this is your calculator i have taken for 5 days so for 5 days it become what rou asset because for 5 days i can derive economic benefit bola re for 5 days i am de deriving economic benefit na i can use it and i can obtain all the economic benefit from this asset therefore it will become my rou asset right of use asset got it yes sir control you understood this all asset definition you have understood now we become perfect in the definition of asset chalega what is the meaning of liability liability will not take much time liability means can you repeat a liability is a possible obligation oh sorry sorry it is a present obligation what is possible obligation what is possible obligation abas 
continuous liability may be present as well as possible. You forgot. Continuous liability may be present obligation as well as possible obligation. You can't say possible obligation will be always continuous liability. Present obligation will be always liability. That is wrong. Present obligation can be also what? Continuous liability. If outflow of resource is not probable or reliable estimation cannot be made. Remember, do some revision. Maja aayega nalayak. Correct. Coming in the class without revision. Yes, sir. Definition of a liability. A liability is a present obligation of the entity to transfer economy resource as a result of past event. So, liability. Can you repeat with me? Liability is a present obligation of an entity to transfer economy resource as a result of past event. For a liability to exist, the three criteria must also, sorry. Three criteria must all be satisfied. Means all the three criteria must be satisfied. First, entity must have an obligation. Entity must have an obligation. The obligation is transfer what economic resource. The obligation should be to transfer economic resource. And the obligation is present obligation that exists as a result of past events. These are the three conditions. First, there must be what obligation. Obligation means what duty or responsibility. Obligation, whenever we use this word, means what duty or responsibility. Means right now under the contract, I have an, I have an obligation to provide services. An obligation to provide services. Correct now, yes sir. Then obligation is duty or responsibility that an entity has no practical ability to avoid. Can I avoid teaching you? No, 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 no. I can, but you will file a case against me in consumer forum. You have some student forum? You know, in CA only, I have seen there is no student union. There is no, in every college, there will be some union. In every college, in every course. Correct now, there will be some union of students. Even though there might be some regional union, but they will not work on the welfare of the student. They will work only on their welfare. Yes, there is some student well student union. There may be some group of students who are working for who are working for the development of what? Student only. But they don't think about this what? Exploitation of the articles. Can you say as a student we are exploited? In Article C, I should not say in this class, Baba. So somebody will file a case against me only because I am a member of ICI. I should not do that. But just try to understand. I feel personally, I feel that there should be a strict regulation for Article C. Then only we can become chartered accountant in due time. Correct now. There's so much exploitation, so much, very much exploitation. I am totally against that. I am totally against it. I was also exploited. Now, stipend is not at all important. Stipend don't give only. We don't want. Stipend because we want knowledge. I don't, I don't think about increasing stipend. Stipend let it be there. But give us proper. It should be what? Some hours limit. They should not exploit us. They should not give the work which is not required to be done by articles. Bring tea, photocopy. You have done photocopy? Means initial first year, we have done photocopy only. <laughs> Why? We have not came for that now. Chalo, that is exploitation. Stipend, I will not say. Give, don't give a stipend. We don't want also. We don't want. Then it's just, we don't want. But we can become CNA if they are just, if they are being 15,000 to us, but they are not giving time. Will you become CA? That will be more painful. So don't think about stipend. I will say stipend they are giving for learning, not for working. So whatever stipend you are getting, even though you are getting 1000, you should be thank you very much. You, are, you have given me stipend for learning, not for working. We are not working there. We are learning there. Try to understand. You want stipend, means you, that it will not be a stipend, that it will be a salary. You are not an employee. You are a trainee. There is a difference between trainee and employee. But they are exploiting as more than what? Employ. So if you demand, then they will exploit. We don't demand, don't give. We don't require stipend. We want knowledge, but 
at a given at a given proper time this will be proper time 6 hour means 6 hour not more than that will it mean the third year of article i have understood this right first year second year i was also exploited third year article i have understood i said my principal you want me to take you want me to remain as an article i will come only for 6 hour is it okay well okay because i want to become cnra i will not work under you the time will come you will work under me just try to understand i have not said like that to my principal but i was thinking like that what i want to say just try to understand you should be you should have such means have such intense in your mind that you are working at that 6 hour you work in such a way that they, he will be happy so whatever time you have got for working work in such a way that he will become happy so i used to work 6 hour effectively but not more than 6 hour because i need to become ce also baba correct but in third year articles if that i have understood not in first year second year got it what i am saying so that much you should also understand ki what i want to say leave it entity has an obligation how i came to that topic because of you nalayak now entity has an obligation an obligation is duty or responsibility that an entity has no practical ability to avoid then it become an obligation means if i can avoid teaching you then it is not an obligation then it is not an obligation correct yes the obligation is transfer an economic resource correct the obligation must have potential to require the entity to transfer an economic resource to another entity correct an obligation can meet the definition of a liability an obligation can become liability even if the probability of transfer of economic resource is low even if the probability of transfer of economic resource is low means any obligation can meet the definition of liability even if the probability to transfer the economic resource is very low is low however low probability might affect the decision about low probability might affect the decision about what information to be provided how to provide that information and whether the liability is recognized and if recognized how it is to be measured how it is to be measured can i say this all discussed where under india's 37 already we have discussed already we have discussed about in about this under india's 37 correct so an obligation can meet the definition of liability even if the probability to transfer an economic resource is low they are saying it can meet the definition of what liability but as per india's 37 if the if there is no present obligation or outflow resource is not probable it is not a liability it is not a liability understood correct are you getting whatever whatever i am saying yes sir means can you see india's 37 was prepared based on this conceptual framework india's 37 was prepared based on this conceptual framework that i want to say this conceptual framework is not prepared based on india's 37 india's 37 has been prepared based on this conceptual framework got it yes sir but once india's 37 is developed now this conceptual framework cannot override the requirement of india's 37 this point you are understanding yes sir we understand correct then obligation is a present obligation that exists as a result of past event this is very simple a present obligation exists as a result of past event only if the entity has already obtained economic benefit or taken an action entity has obtained economic benefit suppose i receive cash from you fees from you i have already received economic benefit from you now i have an obligation to provide what services correct yes sir entity has already obtained economic benefit or taken an action and as a consequence the entity will or may have to transfer an economic resource that it would not otherwise have had to transfer because they have received such economic benefit because of that point they in consequence the entity will 
or have to transfer an economy resource that they would have not transferred if they would have not received what economy resource understood correct so then it become a present obligation then it become a present obligation got it so from examination point of view if i say a liability will exist if three criteria will be satisfied first there must be an obligation second the obligation is to transfer an economy resource third the obligation is a present obligation that exists as a result of past event got it correct then definition of equity i have already said equity definition we have done in detail under india study too however we can read it equity claims are claim on residual interest of the asset of the entity after deducting all liabilities in other words they are claim against entities they are claim against the entity that do not meet the definition of liability means any claim which are not liability will become what equity any claim which are not liability will become equity got it yes sir definition of income and expense already i have explained you can read it the same definition is given explanation is not required for definition of income However, when I say income, income will include gain also. Whenever I say expense, expense will include loss also. Correct? So income include gain, write down somewhere, and expense include loss. Sometimes, if I say sir expense, so what is the meaning of loss? Expense will include loss. Got it? Yes, sir. Now, recognition and derecognition. Now, the point is that when to recognize, when to derecognize. when to recognize so what is the meaning of recognition we have used the word recognition 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 but what is the meaning of recognition for the first time we have understood the definition of recognition with this conceptual framework means they have defined recognition process also recognition is the process of capturing 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 for inclusion for inclusion recognition is the process of capturing for inclusion where in the balance sheet or in the statement of pl in the balance sheet or in the statement of pl means not in statement of cash flow recognition is the process of capturing for inclusion in the balance sheet or in the statement of pl an item item means item means asset liability equity income and expense an item that meet a definition of one of the elements of financial statement that is uh, asset liability equity income and expense correct this is the meaning of recognition process the so recognition is the process of capturing capturing for inclusion in the balance sheet or in sopl an item that will meet the definition of what an elements of financial statement that is asset liability equity income and expense chalega yes sir got it now the amount at which asset liability equity is recognized in the balance sheet the amount at which asset liability equity is recognized in the balance sheet is known as what is carrying amount okay recognition can be done either initial or subsequent so initial whatever we are recognizing that will be also carrying amount subsequent whatever we are doing that will be also carrying amount means when i am saying recognition it can be initial recognition it can be subsequent recognition correct now i hope you understand but at the amount at which we are doing recognition whether initial or subsequent that amount will be known as what carrying amount it's carrying amount carrying amount why because at that amount it is carried in balance sheet at that amount it is carried in balance sheet similarly the balance sheet and sopl are linked the balance sheet and sop are linked because the recognition of one item requires the recognition or derecognition of one or more item the principle can be explained in the form of journal entry are this to nothing but rules rules of journal entry we are doing the rules of journal entry acha you have done uh, golden rules golden rules is what i have explained something about golden rules in my class acha golden rules what are the golden rules accounts personal account then impersonal account impersonal account can be real account and nominal account now you know what is real account na huh? real account means what i have said in class okay real account means what all 
एसिड एक्सेप्ट रिसीवेबल रिसीवेबल आर एसिड बट नॉट रियल रिसीवेबल विल बी वॉट पर्सनल ओ माई गॉड छोड़ वाई एम टीचिंग यू नो अबाउट द रूल्स यू नो अबाउट द रूल्स पर्सनल डेबिट द क्रेडिट द रियल अकाउंट डेबिट वाट क्रेडिट वाट नॉमिनल ऑल डेबिट ऑल क्रेडिट ऑल इनकम दिस रूल्स यू नो ओके माई क्वेश्चन टू यू ऑल आई एम जस्ट आस्किंग ए सिंपल क्वेश्चन है जना एंट्री ऑफ बैड डेप वट इज जना एंट्री ऑफ बैड डेप बैड डेप टू डेटर बाय अप्लाइंग विच रूल्स कैन यू अप्लाई एंड कैन प्रूव दिस जना एंट्री प्रूव इट बैड डेप All expense will be debited. Proved. Debtor. Personal account. Debtor is a personal account. Why it is creditor? No, no. Prove with the rules. You are saying your own rules. Nothing is receivable. Debit the receiver. Credit the giver. What debtor is giving right now? अरे बोलना रे बोल कि वी कांट अप्लाई विच रूल्स गोल्डन रूल्स बकवास रूल्स एट सी ए फाउंडेशन लेवल आई ओनली से दिस इज बकवास आई एम टीचिंग यू बिकॉज दैट इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट टू टीच एट सी ए फाउंडेशन लेवल अदरवाइज आई विल आई विल नेवर टेक गोल्डन रूल्स इन अकाउंटिंग सब्जेक्ट दिस इज टोटली बिकॉज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस गोल्डन रूल्स अकाउंट बिकम डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस गोल्डन रूल्स अकाउंट बिकम डिफिकल्ट There is no rules. This is ratification. You have done bad debt to debtor. You have not applied the rules. Your teacher has given jana entry. Maja aa raha hai bas. Maja aa raha hai na? Arey bol na re. Are you able to understand whatever I am saying? Just try to understand. This cannot be done with golden rules. Therefore, we, as a CA student, we should not use golden rules. We should use modern rules. Have you done modern rules in CA Foundation? How many of you have not done? All have done. Saying lie, you all are saying lie. How many of you done modern rules? Modern rules? Not done, na? Only golden rules, na? And if you read ICA study material, na, they have given more emphasis in modern rules. Means we don't touch only. We don't touch. Correct, na? and this entire rules is based on what modern rules modern rules is very simple for asset and expense increase will be what decrease will be what credit for liability equity and income increase will be what decrease will be what debited and this is the best rules you can now say bad debt increase in expense will be debited debt a decrease in asset will be credited so with this modern rules all jana entry can be done and that only they have given what they want to is the balance in the statement of pl are linked because increase in asset will be increase in income understood increase in asset will be increase in income so balance it and sop are linked are linked now for because the recognition of one item recognition of one item require the recognition or de recognition of one or more item how recognition of income when you recognize income means increase in income created so in statement of pl credit income the corresponding effect will be what in balance sheet either by way of what increase either by way of what increase in asset means debit asset or decrease in liability means debit liability this is nothing but what modern rules this is nothing but modern rules means our conceptual framework has also given what which rules modern rules you know why at entry when i say ca foundation this is entry level and at entry level i have seen that the students are taught by non chartered accountant normally at ca foundation level i have seen the teacher are not a chartered accountant 
and any teacher who are not chartered accountant they don't have this knowledge they will teach as per what any reference book and all reference book are bakwas understood what i am saying and if you have done your coaching from a non chartered accountant who does not give this type of knowledge to you ca foundation will pass difficulty will arise at ca inter and ca ca foundation will pass ca inter also you may pass but difficulty arises where at ca finder because ca foundation i have seen students are totally rat tapping if you have some day time some day time so i have some what i have uploaded some video on foundation concept understood foundation concept there are 50 to 60 concept just go through one or two concept you will understand the level of my teaching at ca foundation level if you have time and i think i have already forwarded that link by the name of accounting fundas in the email so if you have some time then only refer otherwise don't refer correct but you will understand what level should be given at foundation level at foundation level if you know this thing then ca inter and ca final will be will be very easy correct but now i hope it is understood at ca final level no explanation required so what general entry you will do asset account debit or liability account debit to what income this will be what balance sheet this will be what pl similarly for recognition of expense what general entry expense account will be debited to decrease in asset or to increase in liability this will go to what balance sheet this will go to what pl understood this is nothing but modern rules so when i am saying debit asset either it will be initial recognition of asset when i am saying debit asset either it will be initial recognition of asset or increase in its carrying amount either it is initial recognition or increase in carrying amount when i am saying debit liability either it will be de recognition of liability or decrease in its carrying amount either entire liability will be de recognized or decrease in its carrying amount some part has been de recognized a portion has been de recognized understood yes sir i hope understood correct yes sir. recognition criteria recognition criteria when to recognize when to recognize can you say already we have done under indias for pp recognition criteria for investment property recognition criteria for intangible asset recognition criteria for provision recognition criteria for biological asset recognition criteria already we have done inventory recognition criteria already we have done but they have given a uh, overall rules for recognition criteria for all asset liability income and expense correct yes sir so only item that meet the definition of an asset liability or equity are recognized in balance sheet it it means if it is not meeting the definition it will not be recognized similarly only item that meet the definition of income and expense will be recognized in the statement of pl understood yes sir however not all item however not all item that meet the definition of one of those element are recognized not all item that meet the definition of one of those element are recognized Means even though it meet the definition it might have it is not recognized because of low probability because of low probability correct now yes sir so not all item that meet the definition of one of those element are recognized and asset liability is recognized only if recognition provide user of financial statement with information that is useful with relevant information and faithful representation means simple word it will be recognized only when it provide relevant and faith, re relevant information and faithful representation of what assets and liabilities correct relevance this all are theoretical i am just reading going through relevance recognition of particular asset or liability and any resulting income expense or changes in equity may not always provide relevant information if for example 
what are saying recognition of a particular asset or liability and any resulting income or expense or changes in equity whenever there is an income and expense it will change equity also correct may not always provide relevant information if for example it is uncertain whether asset or liability exist it is uncertain whether asset or liability exist or asset or liability exist but the probability of an inflow or outflow of economic benefit is low understood means in this case it will not be recognized understood so recognition of particular asset or liability may not always provide relevant information if it is uncertain whether an asset or liability exists or an asset or liability exists but the probability of inflow or outflow is inflow outflow of economic benefit is low already we have done under india 37 about contingent liability and contingent asset this is nothing but refer in the s 37 got it correct faithful representation recognition of particular asset liability is appropriate recognition of asset liability is appropriate if it provide not only relevant information not only relevant information but also a faithful representation of that asset or liability and any resulting income expense or changes in equity correct whether a faithful representation can be prov can be provided may be affected by the level of measurement uncertainty associated with the asset or liability or by other factor means we have also understood that if the cost cannot be measured reliably it will not be recognized correct for provision we have done that if reliable estimation cannot be made it cannot be recognized already we have covered all this point so can i say with relevant information it must also provide faithful representation how the information will provide faithful representation is based on the level of measurement uncertainty correct associated with the asset or liability or by any other factor understood means inflow is probable but it cannot be measured reliably correct na means in case of intangible asset which are self generated inflow is probable it will provide future recurring benefit probable future recurring benefit but cost cannot be measured reliably therefore self generated intangible asset cannot be recognized means in days 38 is also based on this i hope you are getting all the points correct understood why i have not taken initially this chapter otherwise i would have also died to explain all these points correct then that time it would be pura rattafication i will say you said yes sir yes sir okay okay d recognition recognition you understood now coming to d recognition d recognition d recognition is the removal of all all means in its entirety a part of recognized asset liability from an entity's balance sheet means normally when we say d recognize so we d recognize only asset liability we don't d recognize income and expense recognition recognition we do asset liability equity income and expense but for d recognition it is only asset liability and equity understood income and expense will not be d recognized because it does not have closing balance it does not have closing balance understood therefore d recognition is the removal of all or the part of recognized asset or liability from entity's balance sheet d recognition normally occur when an item is no longer meet the definition of an asset or liability no longer meet the definition of what asset or liability correct can is for equity also we don't d recognize why we don't recognize equity because equity there is no 
obligation to pay and if there is an obligation to pay it is not an equity correct na so equity will be derecognized de only in case of liquidation are you able to understand therefore they have not given what equity here so derecognition is only for asset or liability derecognition is only for asset or liability understood have you understood yes sir elements of financial statement asset asset will be derecognized when the entity loses control of all or part of the recognized asset when they loses control understood liability will be derecognized when the entity no longer has a present obligation for all or part of recognized liability means they do not have now any present obligation to transfer economic resource i think understood accounting requirement for de recognition are as below de recognition of any asset or liability that have expired or have been consumed or collected or fulfilled or transferred referred to as transferred component and recognize any resulting income or expense means when you will de recognize any asset or liability when the asset or liability has been expired or consume consume means what when the inventory is consumed raw material is consumed or the this property plan and equipment is consumed during its useful life correct or collected amount is collected cash flow is collected or fulfilled when the obligation is fulfilled obligation is fulfilled or transferred when the asset or liability are transferred correct so in that case it will be referred as what means in case of transferred it will be referred as transferred component and recognize any resulting income and expense means what general entry you will do but what general entry for asset what beta bolo expense account debit to asset बोलना एम फॉर लाइबिलिटी लाइबिलिटी अकाउंट डेबिट टू इनकम रॉन्ग रॉन्ग बोलना डिक्रीज इन एसेट मीन्स वाट डिक्रीज इन एसेट मीन्स वाट अरे Rules, I am not asking. It means what? Expense only. Expense means what? Either decrease in asset or increase in liability. So here, decrease in asset means derecognition of asset will result in what? Expense. And this is decrease in liability means what? Income. So corresponding income. There is something wrong in this general entry. But okay, this general entry will be done. only when it is consumed means when the asset is consumed depreciation account debit to property plan and equipment then this is correct general entry when it is collected then there is no corresponding income or expense when it is fulfilled there is no corresponding income or expense means if the liability is discharged the general entry liability account debit to cash or bank therefore i will not give this general entry otherwise you will be confused but i hope you have understood and recognize any corresponding income and expense it does not means that every time it will have corresponding income and expense ha de recognition of asset liability may have corresponding income and expense but not always for example you have a financial asset receivable if it is collected it is de recognized now you have a receivable of 10 lakh but you have collected only 9 lakh in full settlement then the net amount will be what the difference amount will be what expense you have not collected na are bolna re so what they are saying recognize corresponding income or expense if any understood if liability the settlement amount is 10 lakh but you have settled only 9 lakh the difference will be gain that will be transferred to pl that will be transferred to pl understood now have you understood yes sir to de recognize any asset or liability that have been expired contractual right to receive cash flow is expired we have done taza taza under what 
इंडेस मंजरून एंड डी रिकॉग्निशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एसेट करेक्ट एंड हैव बीन कंज्यूम इन्वेंट्रीज आर कंज्यूम रॉ मटेरियल्स आर कंज्यूम प्रॉपर्टी प्लान एंड इक्विपमेंट आर कंज्यूम कलेक्टेड कैश फ्लो इज कलेक्टेड फुलफिल्ड कैश फ्लो इज फुलफिल्ड मींस कैश आउटफ्लो इज फुलफिल्ड obligation to pay cash outflow that is fulfilled or transferred entire asset or liability has been transferred correct yes sir continue to recognize the asset or liability retained we have done abhi taza taza in our financial instrument chapter about partial de recognition of financial asset you can relate and so why i have taken immediately after that chapter because now you can relate this entire chapter partial de recognition in case of partial de recognition of financial asset some component is transferred and some component is retained so we will recognize any gain or loss in the component retained no 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 that only they are saying continue to recognize assets or liability retained referred to as retained component this is transferred component this is retained component accordingly no income or expense are recognized on the retained component as a result of de recognition of transferred component unless the de recognition result in changes in the measurement requirement applicable to retained component means if the measurement criteria of retained component is changed then only there will be gain or loss understood otherwise there will be no gain or loss understood i will say for this refer what refer de recognition of financial asset and financial liability under what indias 109 why does not means that they are dealing this concept dealing only with financial asset it is also dealing with property plan and equipment also this concept of framework is dealing with all asset all liabilities got it yes sir applying following presentation and disclosure requirement what they have is presenting any retained component separately in the balance sheet so you can remember under indias 109 last class whatever we have done principal component and interest component whatever has retained was disclosed separately there were two component retained principal and interest that were disclosed separately that is only given presenting any retained component separately in the balance sheet understood are bolna re presenting separately in sopl sopl any income and expense recognized as a result of de recognition of transferred component due due to de recognition of transferred component any gain or loss will be transferred to sopl only yes sir now whenever i am saying sopl sopl means what pl plus oci ha huh? it can be pl it can be oci when i am saying sopl it has two component pl plus oci this gain or loss may be transferred to pl or oci so when i am saying statement of pl it can be pl oci when i am saying only pl it will be pl when i am saying only oci it will be oci got it so when i am saying income and expense transferred to sopl it can be pl or oci it can be pl or oci got it अरे बोलना यस सर करेक्ट प्रोवाइडिंग एक्सप्लेनेटरी इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइडिंग एक्सप्लेनेटरी इंफॉर्मेशन करेक्ट यू वांट ब्रेक यू वांट ब्रेक चलो विल टेक फाइव मिनट ब्रेक
कैन वी स्टार्ट वन सेकेंड एवरी वन ओके तो बिफोर ब्रेक वी हैव कंप्लीटेड अप टू टॉपिक नंबर सिक्स हाउ मेनी टॉपिक्स आर देयर टॉपिक नंबर सेवन एट नाइन थ्री टॉपिक्स आर लेफ्ट वेरी सिंपल नाउ नाउ टॉपिक नंबर सेवन मेजरमेंट इंपॉर्टेंट मेजरमेंट मीन्स अफकोर्स वंस द एसेट्स लाइबिलिटीज आर रिकॉग्नाइज then we need to find out at which amount it should be major income and expense at what amount it should be major correct na so of course can i say for measurement we have done respective indias respective indias means inventory initially at cost subsequently at cost price or nrb whichever is lower property plan and equipment initially at cost subsequently at cost model or revaluation model investment property initially at cost subsequently at under cost model or no revaluation correct intangible as a similar to property plan and equipment then biological asset initially at pay away less cost to sell subsequently at pay away less cost to sell correct now means we have done measurement and that measurement whatever we have done is based on this conceptual framework are you getting means once you have understood that this is very simple we have done financial asset amortized cost initially at pay value plus transaction cost subsequently at amortized cost by applying eir fbt oci debt instrument equity instrument initially at pay value plus transaction cost subsequently at fair value correct na i hope you are understanding whatever i am saying so if you have understood that now it will be very easy to easy to explain from my point of view तो मेजरमेंट बेसिस तो दे आर सिंग देर आर एक्चुअली फोर बेसिस ऑफ मेजरमेंट फोर बेसिस ऑफ मेजरमेंट फर्स्ट इज हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट देन करंट वैल्यू करंट वैल्यू मीन्स देर कैन बी थ्री बेसिस फेयर वैल्यू फेयर वैल्यू वैल्यू इन यूज ओ अच्छा ये बात वेर यू हैन वैल्यू इन यूज फॉर इंपेयरमेंट फॉर इंपेयरमेंट वी हैव डन वी हैव कंसिडर वैल्यू इन यूज Correct and current cost. Current cost means replacement cost. Where we have done replacement cost, raw material. Means can I say if you take into consideration, we have used all measurement basis somewhere. We have used historical cost initially, then fair value we have used, value in use also we have used, and current cost also we have used. So there are two value. What is historical cost and current value? historical cost current value current value means fair value value in use for asset and fulfillment value for liability so value in use for asset and fulfillment value for liability correct and current cost now we need to understand sir what is the difference between historical cost and current value so first historical cost and current value what is difference so can i say this historical cost is derived from the price of the transaction derived from the price of the transaction or other event that give rise to them means whatever initially paid or received is become it will become what historical cost whatever initially paid or received will become historical cost got it yes sir current value is derived using information updated using information updated to reflect condition at a measurement date means using the information updated to reflect the condition as a measurement date means at what point of time you are measuring at that point of time you will derive the information which is updated based on that date and on the basis of that information you will measure current value current value can be fair value value in use or or current cost understood yes sir changes in value can is whenever we are using historical cost the so changes in value is not reflected so not reflected not reflected except there is some exception except to the extent those changes relate to an impairment of an asset of course due to impairment there can be some changes we have done impairment 
impairment of property plan and equipment even the cost model means historical cost model we can say there is an impairment are you getting what i am saying yes sir so changes in value not reflected except to the extent those changes reflect to an impairment of an asset or a liability becoming onerous 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 where we have done in day 37 means we have done an executive contract are not recognized unless it become what onerous so once a liability become onerous it need to be recognized correct yes sir so generally historical cost means for historical cost any changes in the value is not reflected unless it is due to impairment or due to liability become what onerous understood correct yes sir current value can i say changes in value will be reflected from one measurement date to another measurement date because the current value will change from one measurement date to another measurement date from one reporting date to another reporting date yes sir so reflect changes since the previous measurement date in estimation of cash flow and other factors reflected in those current value i hope you have understood okay for example if you have taken fair value into consideration we have done fbtpl or fbtoci any changes in fair value will be recognized understood so historical cost current value are understood historical cost if i am using historical cost so what will be the impact in balance sheet and sop that we need to understand what will be the impact means what will be the impact for assets and liability means how to recognize so the table below summarize the concept of historical cost in each of the assets and liability so for asset for asset can is historical cost will be consideration paid consideration paid plus what transaction cost for property plan and equipment we have done this for investment property we have done this correct are you getting so consideration paid plus transaction cost transaction cost me directly attributable expenses to bring the asset in condition of use got it yes sir for liability it will be consideration received minus transaction cost consideration received minus transaction cost got it yes sir yes sir changes can you see changes any consumption of part or of the economic or all the economic resources that constitute the asset that is depreciation or amortization means can i say changes will arise due to consumption of part of part or all the economic resources means for example you purchase a raw material and you consume it so it means it is a changes consume means it need to de recognize now understood what i am saying so changes will arise due to consumption of part or all of the economy resources that constitute an asset it is nothing but depreciation and amortization you purchase property plan and equipment you start consuming it due to that consumption there will be some changes in the historical cost due to depreciation or amortization changes in the historical cost you will depreciate now minus depreciation so whatever remain that is historical cost only but after consumption correct now so cost minus depreciation that is what nothing but depreciated cost correct now return down value that is historical cost only you can't say this is fair value got it carrying amount but carrying amount can be historical cost or can be fair value understood what i am saying yes sir correct now changes so first changes is due to this reason they are giving the reason of changes reason of changes correct now can you say when i am saying consumption we consume as if we don't consume liability therefore there is no corresponding para for liability understood there is no corresponding para for liability we consume as if we don't consume liability got it yes sir then changes may be due to payment received contracts or cash inflow that extinguish part or all the asset collection from trade receivable so if there is some asset right to collect 
and the payment received changes they change in historical cost it will be de recognized either fully or partly yes sir similarly fulfillment of liability for example by making payment that extinguishes part or all liability or by satisfying an obligation to deliver the goods understood suppose we have received some advance from customer that is a liability so once we deliver the goods the liability will extinguish the liability will extinguish so that will result in changes in the historical cost changes in the historical cost understood i hope this point also you have understood this all point you know correct yes sir then changes may be due to effect of the event due to effect of the event that causes the historical cost of the asset to be no longer recoverable means if the cost is no longer recoverable means that need to be impaired that need to be impaired correct so effect of the event that causes the historical cost of asset to be no longer recoverable then it means it need to be impaired so historical cost will change if it is impaired if it is impaired correct yes sir similarly the effect of the event that increase the value of the obligation to transfer the economy resources needed to fulfill the liability to such an extent that liability become onerous so can i say once the liability become onerous can i say the trans the obligation to transfer economy resource will increase correct now obligation to transfer economy resource will increase now it means liability will increase so changes in the historical cost means initially executory contract there was no liability we have done under india 37 for executory contract there was no liability but once it become onerous we created provision for onerous contract so our liability increases with the effect that liability become onerous correct that they want to say effect of the event that increase the value of liability value of obligation to transfer the economy resources needed to fulfill the liability to such an extent that liability becoming onerous a liability is onerous if the historical cost is no longer sufficient to depict the obligation to fulfill the liability so liability become onerous when you to pay more than what historical cost when you to fulfill more than what historical cost understood yes sir this also we have understood and can i say it will also changes due to accrual of interest to reflect any financing component we have done amortized cost can i say when i am saying amortized cost that is nothing but historical cost so due to amortized cost we add interest expense for financing component correct yes sir so accrual of interest due reflect any financing component for asset it will be interest income for liability it will be interest expense accrual of interest to reflect any financing component so these are the reason for changes in historical cost the first reason consumption this depreciation and amortization second what collection of payment collection of payment for asset anything correct third is that impairment fourth is that accrual of interest due to this reason the historical cost of asset may change for liability first reason fulfillment of liability by making the payment or the liability becoming onerous onerous the last was accrual of interest got it yes sir now coming to the current value historical cost we understood coming to the current value current value means what either it will be exit value or entry value exit value means what ki the no no let me speak exit value means what there are two stage one is what at the time of purchase what is the value and what is the value at the time of sale my question to you all from my point of view i purchase this calculator the price is 300 understood i purchase this calculator price is what 300 now at the time of sale the price will be same or different different means can is a buy price and sale price is different from one entity's point of view correct i am not asking from buyer and seller point of view in one transaction if i am the buyer you are the seller the price remain same at that point of time but from my point of view this is my asset so what is buy price that is entry price coming in sale price means what exit price sale price means what exit price correct 
so can you see when i am saying exit value means the value of asset is determined from the point of view of sale when i am saying entry price the value of asset is determined from the point of view of purchase understood so can you say current value can be exit value or entry value when i am saying exit value it can be fair value or it can be value news or fulfillment value my question to you are value news how you have calculated value news present value of present value of future cash flow to be generated from the use of the asset and present value plus present value for the amount to be received on disposal of the asset at the end of useful life means it is also an exit value entry value means current cost entry value means current cost what was the replacement cost replacement cost the price to be paid if the similar asset is purchased today that is the, the replacement cost if you remember india's too correct means fair value value in use current cost i hope you understood fair value and value in use if i am saying value in use in your mind what should come fulfillment value for liability for asset it is what value in use for liability it is what fulfillment value but i will say only what value in use to make it simple correct so fair value and value in use are which value exit value and current cost is which value entry value but all are which value current value these are not historical cost these are not historical cost my question to you all whether initially we do recognition at fair value at na like yes biological asset initially recognized at fair value less cost to sell abhi bhi have done financial asset will be initially recognized fair value fair value can be transaction price but but if the it is not at market term then we need to find out fair value are bolna everything we have done so initial and subsequent recognition can be done at historical cost can be done at what fair value but can you see value in use is normally not required for initial recognition we never do initial recognition at value in use correct now so normally this value in use is not used for initial recognition initial recognition will never use value in use i hope you are understanding my emotion correct it is normally used for what impairment till now we have used the term value in use only for impairment only for impairment let's see what they want to say exit value exit value means fair value and value in use or fulfillment value to so fair value value in use so let us understand difference between fair value and value in use the main difference is what fair value is based on market expectation market condition india s113 when i say fair value what should come in your mind india s113 so fair value is based on market expectation market condition however value in use is based on entity specific condition this is the main difference between fair value and value in use so what is the meaning of fair value this meaning will do in detail where under india s113 but you can understand price that would be received to sell an asset oh acha ye baat sell an asset entry exit exit the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to, to transfer a liability understood both are which value exit value price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer liability in an orderly transaction between market participant between market participant at a major mint day in an orderly transaction orderly transaction it should it means what it should not be influenced by some personal relationship means if i sell this asset to my subsidiary so it can be at what some price which may be affected with that relationship correct now so in, a, in an orderly transaction means the transaction should be between unrelated party the transaction should be between unrelated party in an orderly in an orderly transaction between market participant at a major mint detail discussion where more discussion need to be done but not now but i hope you have understood the emotions of the definition correct what is the meaning of value news value news you know we have done where under india Thirty. 
36. Present value of the cash flow or other economic benefit that an entity expects to derive from the use of an asset and from its ultimate disposal. Oh, same thing we have done. Correct. Okay. What is the fulfillment value? Just reverse. Present value of cash or other economy resource that an entity expects to be obliged to transfer means to pay. Expect that entity expect to oblige to transfer as it fulfill a liability. Means can I see we can say the fulfillment value is present value of contractual cash outflow. Which the entity is expected to pay on transfer of liability. Understood? Yes, sir. I hope you have understood. Correct? Any doubt? No doubt? Now, value from whose perspective? So, this is reflect the perspective of market participants. Market participant. Means it is calculated from the pers perspective of market participant. Under market condition, under market condition means it might happen there are some entity specific restriction which will not be taken into consideration to determine fair value. For example, just I'll just give a simple example. You'll be able to understand with that example what I want to say. For example, we have a land. Correct. We have a land, and that can be used for commercial purpose. But as per entity's restriction, that is not used for commercial purpose. But if used for commercial purpose, we can derive more benefit. Understood? Means I have purchased land, but I am not using for commercial purpose because I don't want to use it. Correct now. And entity has decided not to use for commercial purpose. Understood. So, can you say what is the entity's restriction that it will not be used for commercial purpose? And now, if you calculate value from entity's point of view, can you say it will be less because we are not able to derive the entire economic benefit from such asset? Now, fair value will be calculated from the point of view of market participants. Now, can you say if I sell this land, the other party can use it for commercial purpose and derive higher benefit? So, fair value for determination of fair value. Will you, will you consider the restriction which has been given by entity? No. The restriction should not be considered. Understood? So that one to say. Reflect the perspective of market participant. Understood? Participant in market to which the entity has access. The asset liability is measured using the same assumption that the market participant would use when pricing the asset or liability if those market participants act in their economic best interest means as per market participant how much price can be derived from the sale of that asset correct however in this value reflect entity specific assumption rather than assumption by market participant means in this when we are calculating value use so can you see in this we will use that restriction because now entity has decided not to use for commercial purpose Therefore, we will find out the present value of cash flow which can be used only for the purpose in which entity want to use it. This NRV is just like value news. When I am saying value news can be also said NRV. NRV for inventory. NRV is based on entity specific restriction or market restriction. Correct now. NRV means what expected selling price from the point of entity. From the point of entity, not from the point of market. So, NRB can be considered as value news for inventory. Value news for inventory. Understood. So, NRB and fair value are different. I have already said NRB and fair value are different. Got it? Got it? Got it. Yes, sir. How determine? How determine? So, fair value to will understand where? I will say refer. India's 113. And this already we know as per India's 36. Already we know as per India's 36 now. Value news. Correct. So cannot be 
observed directly and can means i am right now reading for value news cannot be observed directly and are determined using cash flow based on measurement technique Correct. means if i ask you find out the future cash flow to be obtained from the use of that asset can it be derived directly means can i say it should be based on some estimation means the informations are not available directly the cash flow information are not available directly means when you are estimating value news it is based on future cash flow the future cash flow is not observed directly it need to be measured based on some valuation technique understood there therefore they are saying cannot be observed directly and are determined using cash flow based measurement technique understood however pay value can be calculate means can be determined directly by observing prices in an active market means we'll find out what is the price prevailing in an active market so direct information means if i want fair value of a shares of reliance industry we will go to which market bombay stock exchange or national stock exchange there are two market whatever price listed that become the fair value of what investment in equity shares i hope you are understanding correct so it can be determined directly by observing prices in an active market or using measurement technique means if there is no active market so there should be some technique that technique will discuss where under india s 113 or using measurement technique for example cash flow based measurement technique so this is one of the technique which is given by india s 113 understood but one thing you have understood that fair value is normally derived from observed information directly and value news cannot be derived directly from observed information for that we need some information based on some techniques correct yes sir transaction cost consider in measurement my question to you is this already i have said for calculation of fair value whether you will consider transaction cost transaction cost means cost incurred at the time of sale not transportation cost transaction cost so for determination of fair value will you consider transaction cost already i have said somewhere transaction cost will be adjusted for determination of fair value for determination of fair value not fair value plus transaction cost i not consider na we have done financial as a fair value plus transaction cost means transaction cost is separate for determination of fair value transaction cost will not be considered transportation cost will be considered we have discussed where under india as 41 biological asset agriculture forgotten you forgot everything has been done in detail even though we have not done india as 113 correct so neither those cost incurred on initial recognition nor those cost to be incurred on disposal of asset or settlement of liability are considered means transaction cost will not be considered for determination of fair value however for value news whether transaction cost will be considered yes we have considered the disposal value you can see we have written a and promise ultimate disposal so whatever sale proceed we are obtaining from disposal that is net of disposal cost net of disposal cost correct so these cost incurred on initial recognition and this of course transaction cost one net this cost incurred on initial recognition are not considered but the present value of those cost to be incurred on disposal of the asset or settlement of liability are considered i hope you have understood me normally i have said value in use will not be considered for initial recognition therefore this point is to be clear will never consider value news for initial recognition i hope you are understanding correct now so this cost incurred on initial recognition are not considered means transaction cost at a time of initial recognition will not be considered but transaction cost incurred at time of sale will be considered will be considered understood i hope you have understood this para correct any doubt no doubt any doubt got it yes sir 
so we have understood the difference between fair value and value news or fulfillment value however we have also understood that initial recognition will never be done at value news however initial recognition can be done at fair value yes sir coming to now entry value current cost current cost can you see historical cost is also at the time of purchase of asset and current cost is also at the time of purchase so what is the difference between historical cost and current cost historical historical cost and current cost that we need to understand correct so what they have given value determined on can you see historical cost is determined on the date of acquisition of asset or incurrence of liability so historical cost is determined on initial recognition on initial recognition means on the date of recognition of asset or on the date when the liability is incurred but current cost is determined on each measurement date means for subsequent recognition each measurement date this is the first difference second difference component ki for asset historical cost means consideration paid plus transaction cost for liability is consideration received minus transaction cost but current cost for asset consideration that would be paid consideration that would be paid that would be paid to acquire what for example this is my this is calculator we have purchased 5 year before so at a time we have purchased that time whatever we have paid that become historical cost now we are doing measurement of this calculator so i will see how much consideration would be paid if you acquire similar calculator as on today understood the same calculator if i acquire today how much consideration would be paid that become what current cost understood what i am saying means on measurement date how much consideration would be paid to acquire similar asset that will become current cost plus transaction cost so consideration that would be paid plus transaction cost that would be incurred that become what current cost so liability consideration that would be received if you acquire similar liability today correct now so consideration that would be received minus transaction cost that would be incurred correct normally current cost also we don't use much for initial and subsequent recognition normally we use historical cost of fair value value in use will be used for what impairment correct current cost normally we don't use got it yes sir then information provided by particular measurement basis particular measurement basis now we have understood that we have four basis historical cost fair value market participant assumption value in use entity specific assumption current cost these are the measurement basis you can see value in use they have given some star mark a so what is written in a check kare a a this column summarize the information provided if the value is used if value in use is used as a measurement basis however value in use may not be a practical measurement basis for regular re measurement normally value in use only used for impairment not for regular re measurement correct that means subsequent recognition we do at fair value or at cost only not at what value news value news is used only for what impairment i hope you understood they, they have given that clarification they have given this clarification about what value news it is entity specific assumption based on entity specific assumption yes sir so carrying amount so for historical cost what will be the carrying amount historical cost historical cost including transaction cost to the extent unconsumed or uncollected and recoverable have you understood to the extent unconsumed means whatever consumed will be de recognized na to the extent uncollected whatever collected de recognized to the extent recoverable if not recoverable impaired understood yes sir the so historical cost including transaction cost to the extent unconsumed uncollected and recoverable now fair value means price that would be received to sell a asset 
without deducting transaction cost and disposal means transaction cost will not be considered correct price that would be received to sale and asset without deducting the transaction cost on disposal without deducting the transaction cost on disposal got it correct what is value in use present value of future cash flow acha this we are doing for asset ha huh? not for liability i think you have understood we are doing for asset only present value of future cash flow from the use of the asset and from its ultimate dis disposal after deducting what after deducting present value of transaction cost on disposal means when i am saying present value from its ultimate disposal so when i am saying ultimate disposal it will be net proceeds correct na means amount to be received on disposal minus what transaction cost minus transaction cost got it have you understood this point got it have you understood yes sir current cost current cost including transaction cost to the extent unconsumed uncollected or recoverable so normally historical cost and current cost will find similarity got it and you will find fair value and value in use for as a similarity there is some difference about transaction cost fair value without transaction cost value in use with transaction cost means when i am saying without transaction means without deducting here yeah, with the deducting correct yes sir now then in a statement of pl this was in balance sheet okay this was in balance sheet correct yes sir ba carrying amount will come in balance sheet na correct now in sopl sopl may will think about income and expense in sopl will think about income and expense so initial recognition my question to you all whenever we are doing initial recognition at historical cost whether there will be any income or expense no you can see no here also no so initial recognition no income and expense when we are doing recognition at historical cost or current cost because can i say on if the measurement date is the initial date then current cost and historical cost will be same means if i purchase this today so can i say current cost and historical cost will be same ha on reporting date means on subsequent date the current cost and historical cost will be different are you able to understand whatever i am saying yes sir but can i say fair value so whenever we measure fair value the difference might happen between fair value and the price paid the difference will be transferred to pl correct now so difference between consideration paid and the fair value of the asset acquired will be transferred to pl we have done same thing in biological asset biological asset to bank if you remember to bank suppose we have paid 1 lakh then we have paid some transaction cost rupees 10000 so it become 1 lakh 10000 but it will be initially recognized at fair value less cost of disposal means transaction cost for fair value transaction cost will not deducted but when i am saying fair value less cost of sale then as per india s41 they are saying deduct transaction cost understood so in this case suppose fair value let us assume 1 lakh minus transaction cost let us assume 10000 so it become 90000 so difference where mpl only correct yes sir so difference between consideration paid and fair value of asset acquired will be transferred to sopl when i am saying sopl it can be pl oci as the case may be it can be pl oci not only pl it can be oci also correct depending upon the nature of the asset transaction cost on acquiring the asset can you say whatever transaction cost you have paid to acquire the asset will be charged to pl as an expense automatically correct so transaction cost on acquiring the asset have you understood bolo 
any doubt yes sir then value in use same thing difference between consideration paid and value in use of the asset acquired the transaction cost on acquiring the asset transaction cost on acquiring the asset have you understood not understood have you understood are bolna re not understood let us link with what financial asset financial asset so in financial asset we have amortized cost we have fbtoci we have fbtpl my question to you all initial recognition is done at what fair value fair value fair value but here plus transaction cost plus transaction cost this transaction cost means what on acquisition of the asset transaction cost incurred on acquisition of the asset are bolna re you purchase investment venture and you pay brokerage the brokerage become transaction cost transaction cost will be added in case of ac and fbtoc but not in case of fbtpl correct understood now suppose fair value is 1 lakh and transaction cost is 10000 in all correct you know and suppose normally on acquisition date whatever we are paying that is equal to what fair value only normally but suppose 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 consideration paid is equal to 120000 let us assume consideration paid is 120000 even though fair value is what 1 lakh However, its consideration paid should be equal to one lakh only. Are you able to understand? Now, in the first case, amortized cost, what will do? Financial asset account debit, how much? One lakh ten thousand. To bank, how much? To bank, how much? One lakh twenty thousand. Plus transaction cost paid. That is consideration paid will be plus transaction cost also, na? The total payment is one lakh twenty plus ten thousand. Correct. Now difference is will will be transferred to what? Difference will be transferred to P S O P L. Correct. Understood. Now India has just tried to understand. India has one zero nine says it will be fair value plus transaction cost. transaction cost will be capitalized so you can see in this case transaction cost is not transferred to pl it is capitalized so and here it is saying transaction cost on acquiring of and acquisition of the asset will be transferred to pl but uh, which will prevail in days will prevail what i want to say this is a general principle they are saying this general principle but it cannot override the requirement of in days that i want to say Understood what I am saying? Have you understood? Okay, what they are saying? Difference between consideration paid and fair value will be transferred to pay. This is okay, but transaction cost can be capitalized or may be transferred to PL depending upon the nature of the asset as per respective indices. That I want to say. Me, this is a general principle. Are you able to understand? Have you understood this point? Correct. same thing is written for value in use i hope this point you have understood any doubt have you understood so just write down if you have some doubt transaction cost may be capitalized as per the requirement of indias transaction cost may be capitalized as per the requirement of indias correct so the doubt will be over 
इंडियस विल प्रिवेल ओवर वाट कॉन्सेप्चुअल फ्रेमवर्क यस सर देन सेल और कंजम्पन ऑफ द एसिड वेन एवर यू सेल और यू कंज्यूम द एसिड सो कैन ए सी इट विल डिक्रीज द एसिड एंड विल इंक्रीज द When you sell the asset, when you sell the asset, it will decrease the asset, increase the this is inventory. I am asking about this inventory, not about cash, whatever you have received on sale. This inventory will decrease, and expense will increase. Na cost of sales will increase. Sale. Just try to understand. what i am saying just try to understand this about this asset inventory you sold it so this is decrease in asset and every decrease in asset will increase the expense also na so we used to pass man jana and the cost of sales to inventory ha whatever cash received that is a revenue whatever consideration received that is a revenue so can you say expense equal to historical cost of asset sold or consumed अरे बोलना रही वेन यू हैव सोल्ड द इन्वेंट्री वट जना एंट्री यू हैव डन कैश और बैंक अकाउंट डेबिट टू सेल एंड एज पर इंडिया टू वंस द रेवेन्यू इज रिकॉग्नाइज द कैरिंग अमाउंट ऑफ इन्वेंट्री विल बी रिकॉग्नाइज एज एन एक्सपेंस तो वट जना एंट्री यू डू कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्स अकाउंट डेबिट टू वाट इन्वेंट्री करेक्ट मीन्स एक्सपेंस विल रिकॉग्नाइज With what amount? With the historical cost of inventory sold, and sales will be recognized. Income will be recognized with the consideration received. So there are two effects, na? Understood? That is only said. Ki expense equal to the historical cost of asset sold or consumed. Correct. Income equal to consideration received. Income equal to consideration received. and this expense and income could be presented on gross on net basis as per the requirement of india as my question to you is can you gross it at, sorry can you net it can you net this can you net this income and expense no this cannot be netted off means in sop i write on revenue separately and income separately but if it is sale of pp so can you see it can be presented on net basis because we only transfer the gain or loss on sale to what sopl so in case of pp we can pass this an entry cash account debit to pp and the difference become what gain or loss so it can be presented as a gross or on net basis have you understood this point depending upon the nature of the asset as per the requirement of india as per the requirement of India has understood. Have you understood this point? Correct. And any expenses for transaction cost on selling the asset means, of course, any transaction cost on sale of asset will be also recognized in India. However, we take consideration received net of transaction cost on this. Consideration received will take net of transaction cost in case of property, plan, and equipment, etc. Correct. Or in case of inventory, any selling expense will be recognized separately. In case of inventory, selling expense means transaction cost will be recognized separately. Carries outward if you remember. Commission on sale if you remember. Understood? Yes, sir. I hope you have understood. First point: Have you understood about historical cost? Once you understand historical cost balance, I need to read only. Historical cost? Have you understood? So one second. Can you repeat with me? Expense equal to what? Historical cost of assets sold or consumed. Income equal to consideration received. It could be presented on gross or net basis. Transaction cost on sale of asset will be recognized in PM. Same. In case of fair value, expense equal to fair value of assets sold or consumed. Income is equal to consideration received. Could be presented on gross or net basis. Expense on transaction cost on selling the expense for the transaction cost on selling the asset. Same thing. यहां पर एक्सपेंस इक्वल टू वैल्यू न्यूज एक्सपेंस इक्वल टू वैल्यू न्यूज ऑफ द एसेट सोल्ड और कंज्यूम इनकम इज इक्वल टू कंसीडरेशन रिसीव कुड बी प्रेजेंटेड ऑन ग्रॉस ऑन नेट बेसिस बट इन दिस इट इज साइलेंट व्हाई बिकॉज वैल्यू न्यूज 
has already considered the transaction cost on sale of asset means this value in use whatever you have calculated that is already after deducting what transaction cost on sale of asset understood hi but this is totally bakwas this third column is bakwas bakwas why because it will not be used it will not be used value in use ko hum use nahi karte hain we don't use for initial and subsequent recognition understood now here expense equal to current cost of asset sold or consumed income is equal to consideration received could be presented on gross or net basis expense for transaction cost on selling of the asset i hope you have understood correct interest income can i say if the asset is a financial asset to so interest income will also come if asset is a financial asset so interest income will also come so can i say here interest income at historical cost updated if asset sorry interest income at historical rate historical rate understood so interest income will be recognized at historical rate updated if the asset bear variable interest variable interest means floating rate of interest understood means in this case whenever we are doing accounting on historical cost then we recognize the interest income at historical rate understood here reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value can you see whenever we are doing accounting ya measurement of fair value automatically with that fair value it will be reflected so interest income will be reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value from changes in fair value could be identified separately have you understood this if you have understood this means you have understood india's 109 i will explain we have done fbtoci that instrument and we have done fbtpl today you will understand my suggestion i have given my suggestion here fbtpl and you will understand my suggestion is perfectly correct my question to you all this is 1 lakh and this is 1 lakh 20000 whatever gain is coming it already include interest income or not bolo suppose contractual interest is 10000 suppose contractual interest is 10000 batao what is my gain my gain is what 1 lakh minus 10 minus 1 lakh 20 how much my contractual cash inflow aa gaya na when i am writing by bank it means what contractual interest income received bank correct so my gain is what 30000 this is my total gain na total gain in this case what we do same thing 1 lakh 10000 1 lakh 20000 same thing let us assume ear is equal to contractual rate of interest this everything you can understand only when you have done indias 109 If you have not done India's 109, if you have not revised India's 109, whatever I am explaining, you will not be able to understand. Therefore, immediately after that chapter, I am doing this. Correct. My question to you all: In case of FBTOCI debt instrument, do you recognize interest income separately? Interest income, I am saying, yes, by applying. Yeah. So we will do two interest income. How much? Ten thousand. and now my gain will be what 20000 this will be transferred to what oci but here do we recognize interest income separately not applicable and this fair value gain will be inclusive of interest income bolo yes or no that only i have said na are bolna re that only is said now now you will understand reflect 
reflected in income and expenses from changes in fair value means when i am saying this 30000 in this 30000 interest income is reflected or not are bolna re in this 30000 interest income is reflected or not yes then what they have said could be identified separately oh could be identified separately but in case of fbtoci we identified separately or not but could be means it is not mandatory to identify separately and therefore i said as per india's 109 in this case interest income will not be identified separately because there is no concept of er here interest income is calculated by applying er on this and there is no er in case of fbtoci so could be identified separately means it is not mandatory to identify separately and therefore i say my suggestion whatever i have given under india's 109 is 100% correct understood now i i hope with that explanation you have understood this para otherwise so i will also try to explain it. have you understood to reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value could be identified separately same thing here reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value sorry changes in value news could be identified separately in this interest income will be calculated at current rate got it impairment impairment i hope understood historical cost will be impaired correct so expenses arising because historical cost is no longer recoverable transfer to pn correct can you see if it is measured at fair value reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value bole yes or no if it is measured at fair value not fair value less cost of disposal however india 36 says that recoverable amount will be higher of value in use and fair value less cost of disposal but if it is measured fair value automatically it is reflected bol nahi asano are you able to understand so reflected in income and expense from changes in value could be identified separately we also reflected in income and expense from changes in value in use could be identified separately correct expenses arising because current cost is no longer recoverable so if the current cost is no longer recoverable the difference will be what impairment value changes value changes so if we are doing measurement at historical cost not recognize any changes in the value will not be recognized if you are measuring the asset at historical cost initially and subsequently then no changes in fair value no changes in the value except to the extent of what impairment can is here reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value here reflected in income and expense from changes in value in use here income and expense reflecting the effect of changes in the prices that is holding gain and holding losses this current cost may change at each measurement date current cost may change at each measurement date and can is this will be considered as what income and expense reflecting the effect of changes in the prices and that will be known as holding gain or holding loss it is as simple as if you are holding raw material if you are holding raw material the replacement cost may be lower than historical cost so if you are holding it there will be holding loss correct understood yes sir this is what the measurement principle this b c d you can read you will understand so we have understood what information provided by particular major basis only for asset not for liability correct i hope you have understood whatever we have done till now some portion is left correct that will do it but for a time being we'll take some break okay so we'll meet in the next session soon the chapter is not yet complete okay sir till then thank you very much
कैन वी स्टार्ट वन सेकेंड एवरी वन तो इन द फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर वी हैव कंप्लीटेड अप टू दिस पॉइंट मीन्स अप टू विस टॉपिक इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोवाइडेड बाय पर्टिकुलर मेजरमेंट बेसिस इन दैट ओनली वी हैव डन एसेट्स हैव यू अंडरस्टूड दैट यस सर कमिंग टू लाइबिलिटी दिस यू कैन रीड यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड करेक्ट मीन्स दिस आर द पॉइंट गिवन फॉर ए बी सी डी रिटर्न हियर करेक्ट ना यू कैन सी इनिशियल रिकॉग्निशन पॉइंट नंबर बी तो वट इज रिटर्न चेक करेंगे इनकम और एक्सपेंस मे अराइज ऑन इनिशियल रिकॉग्निशन ऑफ एन एसेट नॉट एक्वायर्ड ऑन मार्केट टर्म्स मीन्स इफ एनी इंस्ट्रूमेंट आर नॉट परचेज एट मार्केट टर्म्स देन अफकोर्स दे कैन बी सम वॉट इनकम एंड एक्सपेंस दे कैन बी डिफरेंस बिटवीन द फेयर वैल्यू एंड ट्रांजेक्शन प्राइस पेड रिमेंबर वी हैव डन इन फाइनेंशियल एसेट इफ फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट Are not at market term, then fair value will not be equal to transaction price paid. So there will be some difference. The difference can be either expense or prepaid expense. It can be some other thing also, depending upon the nature of financial asset. Remember, correct. That is only. So you will be able to understand. Nothing to inform. Coming to liability, the balance sheet. So in balance sheet, what will be the carrying amount for historical cost, fair value, value in use, means fulfillment value now. fulfillment value and current cost so carrying amount consideration received net of transaction cost means consideration received minus transaction cost for taking on the unfulfilled part for taking on the unfulfilled part of the liability increase by the excess of estimated cash outflow over consideration received means for unfulfillment part so carrying amount will be the consideration received minus transaction cost For unfulfilled part, with any liability which is fulfilled, will be derecognized. Will be derecognized. Similarly, fair value will be the price that would be paid to transfer the unfulfilled part of the liability. Price that would be paid to transfer the unfulfilled part of the liability, not including transaction cost that would be incurred on transfer, means without deducting transaction cost. Without deducting transaction cost, correct? Yes, sir. Fulfillment value it will be the present value of future cash flow that will arise. Present value of cash, future cash flow that will arise in fulfilling the unfulfilled part of the liability, including what present value of transaction cost to be incurred on transfer of the liability. I hope now I am reading you are able to understand. Correct? Current cost it will be consideration. consideration that would be currently received consideration that would be currently received for taking on the unfulfilled part of liability means if the liability is taken today how much consideration would be received net of transaction cost it should be the net of transaction cost got it yes sir so i hope carrying amount you have understood correct then coming to the statement of pl Initial recognition. Can I say there will be no income and expense in case of historical cost? There will be no income and expense in case of current cost. Already I said current cost will be equal to historical cost on initial recognition. Current cost will be equal to historical cost on initial recognition. Half a subsequent recognition, current cost and historical cost will be different. Got it? Now initial recognition fair value. Fair value. Can I say any difference between consideration received and the fair value? Fair value of liability will be transferred to SOPL. Will be transferred to SOPL. Correct. Similarly, transaction cost on on incurring or taking the liability means transaction cost on the date of recognition of liability on initial recognition of liability will be also charged to PL if not adjusted with fair value. I can say in this way means for any liability means any liability which is amount. Which is means for financial liability we have done under NDS 109 either it will be amortized cost or FBTPL. So for FBTPL initial recognition is done at fair value. For amortized cost it is done at fair value minus transaction cost. You remember. So if it is fair value minus transaction cost, then of course transaction cost will not be transferred to SOPL. Yes sir. Correct. Similarly for value in use difference between consideration received and the fulfillment value. fulfillment value of the liability it should be fulfillment value fulfillment value 
करेक्ट तो डिफरेंस बिटवीन कंसिडरेशन रिसीव एंड फुलफिलमेंट वैल्यू ऑफ लाइबिलिटी विल बी ट्रांसफर टू एसओपीएल एनी ट्रांजेक्शन कॉस्ट ऑन इनिशियल रिकॉग्निशन विल बी आल्सो ट्रांसफर टू एसओपीएल करेक्ट यस सर नाउ फुलफिलमेंट ऑफ लाइबिलिटी कैन से व्हेनेवर लाइबिलिटी इज फुलफिल्ड इट विल बी डी रिकॉग्नाइज्ड इट विल बी डी रिकॉग्नाइज्ड नाउ इफ आई विल रीड यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड बट व्हाट दे वांट टू से फुलफिलमेंट ऑफ लाइबिलिटी इनकम इक्वल टू हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट ऑफ लाइबिलिटी फुलफिल्ड करेक्ट एक्सपेंस फॉर कॉस्ट इंकरिंग इन फुलफिलिंग द लाइबिलिटी एक्सपेंस फॉर कॉस्ट इंकर्ड इन फुलफिलिंग द लाइबिलिटी मीन्स जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड सपोज यू हैव अ लाइबिलिटी सपोज लोन पेबल रुपीज टेन लैख तो वेन यू फुलफिल फुलफिल मीन्स यू विल डिस्चार्ज इट you will pay how much amount 10 lakh you will pay so your entry will be liability account debit to cash or bank means can i say it is decrease in liability and consideration paid so can i decrease in liability can be considered as income and whatever you have paid for discharge of liability means fulfillment of liability will be an expense but can i say we disclose these on net basis means we pass generally liability account debit to cash and any difference will be the net income or gain net income or gain or expense or loss understand what i am saying so what they want to say income equal to the historical cost of liability fulfilled Income equal to the historical cost of liability fulfilled. Correct. Expense for the cost incurred in fulfilling the liability. Expense for the cost incurred for fulfilling the liability could be presented on net on gross basis. Means this, if I am saying liability account debit to income and expense account debit to cash, this is which basis? Gross basis. But normally we don't do gross basis. We do what? Net basis. For liability, normally we do what? Net basis. We do not apply. gross basis so what they have just given general principle they have given general principle it can be accounted either on gross or net basis normally it is what on net basis so can you say normally it is always net basis net basis correct means what vijana entry will do liability to cash or bank and any difference will be income or expense any difference will be income or expense means liability is 10 lakh but you have discharged only 9 lakh for full settlement the difference will be what your gain income got it yes sir same thing if you have understood this then you can understand further also ki here income equal to the fair value of liability fulfilled expense for the cost incurred in fulfilling the liability correct income equal to fulfillment value of liability fulfilled expense for the cost incurred in fulfilling the liability here income equal to current cost of liability fulfilled expense for the cost incurred in fulfilling the liability could be presented on net or gross basis could be presented on net or gross basis could be presented on net or gross basis understood so just write down this journal entry so that when you are ready you will be able to understand what is gross basis what is net basis gross basis journal entry net basis journal entry तो ग्रॉस बेसिस जनरल एंट्री व्हाट लायबिलिटी अकाउंट डेबिट टू इनकम देन एक्सपेंस अकाउंट डेबिट टू कैश अंडरस्टूड करेक्ट नेट जनरल एंट्री विल व्हाट लायबिलिटी टू कैश द डिफरेंस विल बी व्हाट आइदर इनकम और एक्सपेंस ओनली फॉर योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग राइट डाउन अदरवाइज यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू इंटरप्रेट व्हाट इज गिवन गॉट इट so this is fulfillment of liability in fulfilling the liability but can is there can be transfer of liability also liability may be transferred liability may be transferred as you have done in case of business combination all assets and liability are transferred to other entity so liability is also transferred that is not fulfilled liability is transferred liability is transferred so in that case also same thing only 
इनकम इक्वल टू द हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी ट्रांसफर करेक्ट एक्सपेंस फॉर कॉस्ट पेड टू ट्रांसफर द लाइबिलिटी टू ट्रांसफर द लाइबिलिटी सेम ये इनकम इक्वल टू द फेयर वैल्यू ऑफ लाइब्रेरी ट्रांसफर एक्सपेंस फॉर द कॉस्ट पेड इंक्लूडिंग ट्रांजेक्शन कॉस्ट टू ट्रांसफर द लाइब्रेरी इनकम इक्वल टू फुलफिलमेंट वैल्यू ऑफ लाइब्रेरी ट्रांसफर एक्सपेंस फॉर द कॉस्ट पेड इंक्लूडिंग ट्रांजेक्शन कॉस्ट टू ट्रांसफर द लाइबिलिटी इनकम इक्वल टू करंट कॉस्ट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी ट्रांसफर एक्सपेंस फॉर द कॉस्ट पेड फॉर द ट्रांसफर लाइब्रेरी सेम थिंग Understood, correct. The also could be presented on gross or net basis. Could be presented on gross or net basis in all cases. Got it? Yes, sir. This also you have understood. Can you see interest expense in case of historical cost? Interest expense will be recognized at historical rates. Updated if liability bears variable interest. So if there is a floating interest, then it will be updated with the variable rate of interest. However, in this case, it will be reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value. It will be reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value. Here also reflected in income and expense from changes in fulfilment value. Here interest expense at current rate, interest expense at current rate. Got it? Here you can see reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value, but could be identified separately. That interest expense could be identified separately. Understood? Yes, sir. Effect of the event that causes a liability becoming onerous. So when a liability become onerous, then we do change the value of liability. Yes, sir. So expense equal to the excess of estimated cash outflow over the historical cost of liability, or a subsequent change in that excess. So can you say whatever? Suppose historical cost is 10 lakh, but due to onerous, now the liability become 12 lakh. So excess will be recognized as an expense. Correct. So expense equal to the excess of estimated cash outflow over the historical cost of liability, or a subsequent changes in that excess, or subsequently that excess may change. Correct. Here, can you see because it is subsequently recognized as fair value, so reflected in income and expense from the changes in fair value could be identified separately. Similarly, here so reflected in income and expense from changes in fulfillment value could be identified separately. Here, expense equal to the excess of estimated cash outflow over the current cost of liability, or a subsequent changes in that excess. Understanding? Have you understood this point? This point have been reflected in income and expense from changes in fair value because they are subsequently recognized as fair value. So once it become onerous, we'll take the fair value after becoming onerous. So suppose initially it was one lakh, now it become two lakh. So ultimately, the increase is adjusted in fair value. Adjusted in fair value, but it can be also identified separately. Suppose due to onerous the liability, the fair value increases by twenty thousand. Suppose due to due to onerous liability become onerous, the fair value increases by twenty thousand. So you can say due to onerous, it increases by twenty thousand. And due to fair value measurement, it become what eighty thousand. You can identify it separately. You can identify it separately. Got it? Understood? Yes, sir. Understood. Then value changes. Can I say historical cost not recognized? Any changes in historical cost subsequently will not be recognized except to the extent liability is becoming liability has become onerous. Correct? Half for financial liability, income and expense from changes in estimated cash flow. If it is a financial liability, and if the cash flow was estimated, and there is a changes in the estimated cash flow because of that reason, can I say there can be changes in historical cost? There can be changes in historical cost. We have done some financial liability last class. We have done one example, one question. We have done. We are we have estimated the cash flow. We have done the estimated cash flow, and there can be some changes in the estimated cash flow due to repayment, pre prepayment. Remember that question will come limited. So in that case, if the estimated cash flow has changed due to prepayment, etc., then of course the historical cost will change. We have changed the amortized cost in that case. Amortized cost. Remember, yes sir. Then here, any value changes will be reflected in income expense or changes in fair value. Here also reflected in income expense from changes in fulfillment value. 
here income and expense reflecting the effect of changes in the price means due to changes in current cost it will be it will be what it will be recognized as income and expense as an holding gain or loss understood i hope you have understood correct this is what information the topic was what it is information provided by particular measurement basis how to provide the information historical cost fair value value in use or fulfillment value or current cost got it but can you see as per india's is concerned we are not using only fair value can you see we are using combination of all this we are using a combination of all this sometime we are using historical cost sometime we are using fair value sometime we are using current cost value in use by impairment so we are using all the co combination of all this we can't say that india's is totally based on fair value we can't say india's is totally based on fair value for investment property there is only cost concept there is only cost model understood yes sir this also you have understood okay sir then factor to consider when selecting a measurement basis for initial and subsequent measurement of an asset reliability can is a factor remain same relevance and faithful representation means whatever measurement basis we are using should provide relevant information and should provide faithful representation of the asset liability equity income and expense correct yes sir so when i am saying relevance asset or liability characteristic contribution to future cash flow correct let us read when i am saying relevance characteristics of it depends upon the characteristics of asset or liability means the relevance of information provided by measurement basis depend partly on the characteristics of asset or liability in particular on variability of cash flow and sensitivity of value of the asset or liability to market factor or other risk means if the cash flow is means just try to understand if the assets and liability is based on the sensitivity of the value of asset or liability to the market factors means the value is totally based on market factor then can you say we should use fair value we have done in case of revaluation model ki if there is a significant changes in fair value then revaluation should be done on annual basis correct na means in that case the value of asset is sensitive sorry is sensitive to the market factors correct to so, characteristics of asset reliability this point have been understood then asset reliability carried at historical cost means when an asset reliability should be carried at historical cost what they are saying if the value of an asset reliability is sensitive to market factor or other is its historical cost might differ significantly from current value then its historical cost might differ from its current value and hence may not provide relevant information then historical cost will not provide relevant information if information about changes in value is important to the user of financial statement if information about changes in the value is important from the user of financial statement understood correct so what they want to say if the value of financial liability is sensitive to the market factor then we should use current value instead of what historical cost correct moreover because measurement at historical cost does not provide timely information about changes in fair changes value income and expense reported on that basis may lack provide may lack predictive value and confirmatory value means whenever we are doing measurement on historical cost whenever we are doing measurement on historical cost so can you say we are not recognizing any changes in the fair value therefore whatever information we are providing in financial statement may not be relevant may not be relevant because changes in the value may be important from the user of financial statement point of view correct now so if that is the case we should provide information based on current value not based on historical cost correct therefore when it, whenever it is held for the purpose of trading we have said it should be measured fbtpl because in that case whatever changes in the fair value is relevant for the user of financial statement correct now so whenever a financial asset is held for the purpose of trading we said fbtpl and changes in fair value will be transferred to pl whenever it is hold to collect contracts or cash flow and sale whenever required 
so in that case also changes in fair value is relevant therefore in that case also the fair changes in fair value is transferred to sopl but in oci but in oci but in case of amortized cost in case of amortized cost it is only hold to collect contractual cash flow and there is no use of any changes in fair value therefore it was carried at amortized cost and we have not recognized any changes in fair value in sopl i hope you are understanding understood this para yes sir assets or liability which are carried at fair value what they say changes in fair value of any asset or liability reflect changes in the expectation of market participant and changes in the risk preference means can i say whenever assets and liability are carried at fair value so whatever changes in the value is due to the expectation of market participant and changes in the risk preference can i say due to market factor and due to risk preference that fair value may change fair value may change we have done that if suppose just try to understand ki you have taken a loan you have taken you have given a loan better you have given a loan at this point of time correct and market rate of interest was 10% 12% and 14% my question to you all due to this market rate of interest fair value will change or not fair value of this financial asset will change fair value of this financial asset will change so that they are saying changes in fair value as well as reflect changes in the expectation of market participant so once the market rate of interest will change the expectation of market participant will change and due to that changes in the expectation of market participant fair value will change fair value will change when i am saying market price is listed market price is stock market market price is stock market can you see that also change due to the expectation of investor correct now means in a in a economy which are under recession there will be no buyer means now what can i say there is no buyer means expectation of the buyer is that they don't they don't want to purchase right now and due to that market price will fall down even though that company is a profit making company due to covid 19 what happened the index in nifty or sensex both you know about this na bombay stock exchange and national stock exchange came down to 20 i think from 45000 something 45 na 45 that time i forgot came down to 27000 that time you have invested how many you invested not invested na why big believe me i was thinking to invest but risk factor believe me i was having in saving account means i kept it ki i will invest i will invest i will invest but due to risk factor i have not invested means from 45 it came to 28000 now i was thinking it will go down it will go down it will go down now it be, it came to 60000 from 20 it came to 60000 and i have not invested that time now i am investing why i am investing now it is increasing so my market expectation means my expectation is based on market expectation now everyone is buying so i am also buying if everyone is selling i am also selling understood correct now when there was cpt then everyone was doing ca you ask any second comma student what you are doing ca because cpt entry was very easy now in ca foundation no one is doing ca risk factor increased risk factor increased however at ca final percentage remain same passing percentage ca final remain same but cpt percentage was higher than ca foundation understood so it totally depends upon market expectation totally depend upon market expectation chalo i hope you have understood you are able to understand my emotions whatever i am saying correct this is all a theoretical point i think you can read contribution to future cash flow contribution to future cash flow for assets and liability that produce cash flow indirectly you only say for assets and liability which produce cash flow indirectly for example is property plan and equipment generate cash flow but not directly indirectly so we should use historical cost or we should use fair value understood what i am saying any assets or liability which produce 
any assets or liability that produce cash flow indirectly we should use which measurement basis historical cost correct now because it will not affect cash flow directly so what they are saying historical cost or current cost is likely to provide relevant information about that activity however for assets and liability that produce cash flow directly cash flow directly then current value is likely to provide relevant information about that activity current value now current value may be fair value it may be value news it may be current cost also understood current value is likely to provide relevant information about that activity got it but can i say why we are doing this means just write this chapter is not at all important for preparation of financial statement because for financial statement we will use in days respective in days this is only useful to develop in days understood means this in whatever we are reading it is not for accounting treatment this is for development of indias for any new transaction event understood whatever i am saying so you don't think that this will follow in our accounting treatment accounting treatment whatever will do as per respective indias if there is a financial asset will you come to conceptual framework you will go to what indias 109 correct now financial liability you will go to indias 109 pp you will go to indias 16 This whatever we are discussing may not be important. Correct now. So this chapter is only important which provide conceptual framework for development of India, for preparation of India. Got it? Yes. Now faithful representation. It it is based on consistency and certainty. You can read. बहुत हो गया. Correct now. Let us read. When assets and liability are related in some way. using different measurement base for those assets and liability can create a measurement inconsistency in last class i have given an example i have said i have taken a loan and i purchase investment in venture this i am measuring at fbtpl this i am measuring at amortized cost whether it is correct can you say this measurement at different basis will provide inconsistency in accounting and i said for this we should also use what fbtpl you remember so this whatever is given because of this para under indias 109 some exception has been given an exception is to opt fbtpl initially you remember yes sir so when assets and liability are related in some way when they are related in some way using different measurement basis for those assets and liability can create measurement inconsistency known as accounting mismatch correct if financial statement contain measurement inconsistencies if the financial statement contain measurement inconsistency those financial statement may not faithfully represent some aspect of entity's financial position and financial information means if this is measured at amortized cost this is measured at fbtpl so can i say this will not provide information which is uh, which is relevant and this will not provide faithfully representing whether it will not represent faithfully the inform, information correct understood yes sir certainty 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 means there should be measurement there should not be measurement uncertainty if there is a measurement uncertainty it will not be recognized that is only given when a major when a measurement cannot be determined directly by observing prices in an active market and must instead be estimated measurement uncertainty existed means whenever the prices are not observed directly from the market then we to estimate it and whenever we are estimating it there will be some measurement uncertainty there will be some measurement uncertainty so what they want to say a high level of measurement uncertainty does not necessarily prevent the use of measurement basis that provide relevant information even though there may be high level of measurement uncertainty it does not means we will not measure it we may measure it if it is providing relevant information if it is providing relevant information therefore in case of provision we used to say reliable estimation can be made if it is providing relevant information we can measure it even though can i say because the outcome is in future there may be some measurement uncertainty but if you can measure it reliably then okay thank you very much understood 
so there may be some measurement uncertainty because it involves some estimation it does not means will not measure it will measure it on some basis if it is providing reliable information understood yes sir however in some cases the level of measurement uncertainty is so high that information provided by measurement basis might not provide a sufficiently faithful representation in such case it is appropriate to consider selecting a different measurement basis that would also result in relevant information so if it is not providing it we if it is not providing faithful representation of measurement then we can use some different measurement basis then we can use some different measurement basis understood yes sir how about measurement and this is important para important para measurement uncertainty is different from both outcome uncertainty and existence uncertainty means there are three type of uncertainty one is outcome uncertainty then second is what existence uncertainty the third is what measurement uncertainty now for recognition of accessibility we always think about outcome and existence uncertainty correct now and if it can be measured reliably we can recognize the asset correct now so what they are saying but their presence may sometime contribute to measurement uncertainty so what is the meaning of outcome uncertainty outcome uncertainty arises when there is an uncertainty about the amount or timing of any inflow or outflow of economic benefit that will result from asset reliability correct now understood means just try to understand when we have done provision provision may we have done that out outflow of resource must be probable outflow of resource must be probable means that was outcome certainty outcome certainty correct now i hope you understand it so when i am saying outcome uncertainty arises when there is a uncertainty about amount or timing of any inflow or outflow of an economic benefit that will result from an asset or liability so there must not be outcome uncertainty if there is some outcome uncertainty we will not recognize the liability for asset we are more strict if you remember contingent asset if the inflow is probable then also we will not recognize you remember yes sir existence uncertainty arises when it is uncertain whether an asset or liability exists when we say when we say present obligation the present obligation means what it is existing that certainty we have so that is existence certainty so when i am saying present obligation due to past event means the obligation exist on reporting date and if that is not certain we will not recognize if i am saying possible obligation the there ex there is some uncertainty regarding their existence when i am saying possible obligation means there is some uncertainty is there regarding their existence and therefore we do not recognize if there is a we do not recognize liability if there is a possible obligation remember so existence uncertainty arises when it is uncertain whether an asset or a liability exist understood now what they want to say if the fair value of an asset can be determined directly if the fair value of an asset can be determined directly by observing the prices in an active market means there is no measurement uncertainty no measurement uncertainty is associated with the measurement of that fair value even if it is uncertain how much cash the asset will ultimately produce and hence there is an outcome uncertainty just try to understand you purchase a property plan and equipment now how much cash will be obtained from the use of that pl property plan and equipment is uncertain right now but if you can measure the value of this property plan and equipment on initial recognition so there is no measurement uncertainty even though there may be some outcome uncertainty understood what i am saying so what they want saying what they want to say if the fair value of an asset can be determined by observing prices in an active market 
नो मेजरमेंट अनसर्टेनिटी इज एसोसिएटेड विद द मेजरमेंट ऑफ दैट फेयर वैल्यू इवन इफ इट इज अनसर्टेन हाउ मच कैश द एसेट विल अल्टीमेटली प्रोड्यूस हैं दे इज एन आउटकम अनसर्टेनिटी मीन्स दे मे बी सम आउटकम अनसर्टेनिटी बट दे मे नॉट बी वर्ड मेजरमेंट अनसर्टेनिटी एंड वी कैन मेजर इट अंडरस्टूड got it yes sir all are theoretical point i'm trying to explain but okay coming to point number 4 point number 4 this you will understand factor is specific to initial recognition of an asset and liability if transaction are at market term then what can i say initial recognition will be equal to transaction price paid or transaction price received simple at initial recognition the cost of an asset acquired or liability incurred is normally similar to its fair value at that date unless transaction cost are significant ha if the transaction cost are significant then we say fair value plus transaction cost na so i have said in which chapter in ds 109 i have said ki fair value will be equal to transaction price paid in case of asset and transaction price received in case of liability If instrument are at market term, if instrument are at market term, simple. Therefore, whether historical cost or current value is used on measurement basis, subsequently the same basis is also normally appropriate at initial recognition. What they are saying? That therefore, whether historical cost or current value is used as a measurement basis, subsequently, means subsequently it might happen you are using historical cost or uh, current value, but at initial recognition the price will remain same. Initial recognition, the fair value and transaction price paid will be same. But if the transaction are not at market term, is off market terms, then asset may be acquired or liability may be incurred as a result of an event that is not a transaction or market term. It may be appropriate to measure the asset acquired or liability incurred at deemed cost. Then we will find out deemed cost. Deemed cost is nothing but fair value. Deemed cost here means what fair value or better write down current value. For this chapter, it will be current value. Current value can be fair value or value news or current cost. Understood? It may be appropriate to measure the asset acquired or liability incurred at deemed cost. In some such cases, the current value of the asset or liability is used as a deemed cost on initial recognition. Read it also. means we need to find out current value as per india's money run and we have calculated fair value correct yes sir any difference between the deemed cost and any consideration given or received given means asset received means liability correct would be recognized as an income or expense at its initial recognition that only we have done i hope all the points are clear with financial instrument chapter means if i would have not done financial instrument i would have died now you are able to understand each and every point because you have done financial instrument chapter correct yes sir this also you have understood measurement of equity measurement of equity can i say equity will be measured asset minus liability simple the total carrying amount of equity is not measured directly it equals to the total carrying amount of all recognized asset less total carrying amount of all recognized liability over asset minus liability got it then topic number 8 presentation and disclosure this too you can read by rule i should read you can read aruga so fast presentation and disclosure so of course to facilitate effective communication of information in financial statement when developing presentation and disclosure requirement of india a balance is needed between a balance is needed in between what giving entities the flexibility to provide relevant information that faithfully represent the entity's asset liability equity income and expense and requiring information that is comparable both from period to period for a reporting entity and a single reporting period across the entity means this should be comparable also correct classification can i say we should do classification of assets liability equity income and expense such a way such that comparison is possible 
comparison is possible you can read it can we do offsetting so offsetting should not be done unless it is required by india so normally offsetting offsetting will not give relevant information so normally we should not offset one asset with other liability how we can offset assets liability only as required by india correct so that is given offsetting occurs when an entity recognizes and major both assets and liability at separate unit of account means we have recognized assets and liability separately assets and liability are recognized separately correct but group them into a single net amount in the balance sheet but in the balance sheet they are grouped together that is known as offsetting for example we have done provision and reimbursement asset so provision is recognized separately and reimbursement you remember reimbursement if it is virtually certain recognize as a separate asset now in balance sheet can we set off no as per india 37 we cannot set off but in sopl yes we can set off understood so what they are saying offsetting classifying dissimilar item together so normally we are classifying dissimilar item together which will not provide relevant information so offsetting classify dissimilar item together and therefore is generally not appropriate and therefore we should we should avoid offsetting correct yes sir aggregation can we aggregate one asset with other asset one liability with other liability yes of aggregation is permissible aggregation is adding together asset liability equity income and expense that have shared characteristic and are included in the same classification for example land 1 land 2 land 3 we can aggregate correct now aggregation make information more useful by summarizing a large volume of details so there can be many lands so land 1 2 1000 no 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 together one land if they have shared characteristics same characteristics got it yes sir topic number 8 also over last point topic number 9 this is what thoda sa practical means for topic number 9 will take some questions correct so of course let us do it and complete it correct now concept of capital and capital maintenance concept of capital and capital maintenance what they are saying this chapter concept of framework are saying there are two ways of maintaining capital one is maintenance of capital under financial concept one is maintenance of capital under physical concept so what is this before coming to the what explanation on this just try to understand let me give you some idea why we are doing this my question to you all suppose you invested 10000 in your business initially and at the end it become 20000 what is your profit retained profit is what at the end means at the end means after one year two year three year whatever it become 20000 so what is your profit bolo 10000 soste ho itna 10000 you might be thinking so what is this 20 minus 10 This is your retained profit. Retained profit means after drawing, after distribution of dividend. Retained profit in the entity, correct? This profit is calculated as per financial concept. We call it financial profit. This is not physical profit. I mean, this profit is known as financial profit because we are maintaining capital under financial concept. But just try to understand, everyone. If you invested ten thousand here, and let us assume this is one year time. My question to you all: After one year, without doing business, whether value of money will remain same? Understand what I am saying? My question to you all: You have ten thousand, and you are not doing any business. You are not doing any operation. My question to you all: After one year, what will be the value of this amount invested? Huh? It will be ten thousand more than ten thousand. Ten thousand, na laak. You do not time value of money. It will remain ten thousand. 
इट विल रिमेन टेन थाउजेंड अरे बोलना रे मीन्स यू आर नॉट डूइंग ऑपरेशन बट अफकोर्स यूल इन्वेस्ट समवेयर एल्स ना अरे यू आर ए प्रूडेंट बिजनेस मैन यूल कीप इन योर कैश इन योर हैंड हेलो 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 बोलना रे नाइक सपोज टेन परसेंट इज द रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इट विल बिकम इलेवन थाउजेंड करेक्ट मीन्स विदाउट डूइंग एनी बिजनेस इट विल बिकम इलेवन थाउजेंड एंड ड्यू टू बिजनेस इट इज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड माई क्वेश्चन टू यू ऑल वट इज प्रॉफिट प्रॉफिट इज नॉट टेन थाउजेंड प्रॉफिट इज वॉट नाइन थाउजेंड दिस इज प्रॉफिट अंडर फिजिकल कॉन्सेप्ट Understood. Means, can I say we are ignoring what time value of money in our financial statement? I hope you are understanding. Correct, na? So these are two way, two ways of calculating profit. So what they want to say? What they want to say? That the selection of appropriate concept of capital by an entity should be based on. Need of the user of his financial statement. What is the need of the user of his financial statement? Means either we can use financial concept or we can use physical concept. Thus, the financial concept of capital should be adopted if the user of financial statement are primarily concerned with the maintenance of nominal invested capital or purchasing power of invested capital. Have you understood? Not understood. Correct. I will explain. However, the main concern of the user is with the operating capability of the entity. If the main concern of the user is with the operating capability of the entity, means what is the operating capacity of the entity, then physical concept of capital should be used. Then physical concept of capital should be used. You can see in this. we are identifying we are able to identify what is the operating capacity of the entity 10000 is not the operating capacity 9000 is the operating capacity of the entity understood correct but if the user are not interested about that user are mainly concerned about the maintenance of nominal invested capital or the purchasing power of invested capital then we will use the concept of financial then we will use the we will maintain the capital under what Financial concept. Understood. Let me take one question. With the question, I will try to explain. With the question, I will try to explain. So this is what you have question bank. You have question bank volume one. So please take it out. If you do not have question bank, then see the screen. What happened? I will not see you only you. Okay, this all illustration first. Can you read? Most of the answer will be based on other Indians. Correct now. But first you read. I will not read it because I have done most of the reading. You just read it. Any doubt? I will discuss. Okay. So don't worry. You will have no doubt. But if you have doubt, I will discuss. Come to this question. Illustration number five. Very important. If they will ask, they can ask this question. However, all the illustrations are very important because this is the amendment. A question may be expected from this chapter. Same to same, they will do copy paste. Copy paste. Okay. There are how many? Five illustrations are there. Only five. And then one question is there. Six. Six questions are there. Other sources leave. Correct now. Six questions are there. It will take six minutes. करेक्ट ना अरे बोलना रे वेर इज दट क्वेश्चन अ ट्रेडर कमेंस बिजनेस ऑन वन वन टू थाउजेंड वन विथ रुपीज ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय सिक्स थाउजेंड यूनिट ऑफ ए सर्टन प्रोडक्ट एट रुपीज टू पर यूनिट सिक्स थाउजेंड इंटू टू ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड मीन्स दे इन्वेस्टेड हाउ मच ट्वेल्व and they purchase inventory how much 6000 into 
During the year 2002, he sold these units at INR3 per unit and had withdrawn 6,000. So they have sold, means initially it was 12,000. Correct? Then they purchase inventory of 12,000 minus 12,000. Then they have sold entire 6,000 into 3. How much? 18,000. And they have withdrawn how much? 6,000. What is the closing capital? 12,000. This is the closing capital is 12,000. Got it? Yes, sir. The price of the product at the end of the year is 2.5 per unit. In other words, the specific price index applicable for the product is 125. This is consumer price index. Do you know about consumer price index? Do you know about index? Consumer price index. This all thing you have to, you'll do in SFM. If you have not done, they will give you the detailed discussion about this index. Correct now. Consumer price index, I think in economics also you have done. You have done now. I will I don't want to go into that. If you don't good, if you don't know, refer Google Baba. The average price indices at the beginning and at the end of the year are hundred. Achha, average price indices. This is what consumer sorry. My mistake. My mistake. They have given at the end. Means the average price indices at the beginning and at the end of the year is 100 and 120 respectively. This is what price they have given price index. Correct? Okay. And the price of the product at the end of the year is 2.5. This is what? Can I say this is current cost? When I am saying the price of the product at the end of the year is 2.5. Means similar unit can be purchased at the end of the year at rupees what? 2.5 that become current cost? That become current cost? And this become consumer price index. They have written, in other words, the specific price index applicable to product is 125. Means they have calculated based on what? Initially it was 2. Now it become what? 2.5. Understood what they have said. Initially it was 2. Now it become what? 2.5. Okay. Find out financial capital maintenance at historical cost. Financial capital maintenance at current purchasing power. And physical capital maintenance. Physical capital maintenance means it is at current cost. At current cost. Understood. I will explain with the solution only. This question will come for six marks. Already have been asked in previous attempt because this concept remains same as per previous chapter in and this chapter. This concept remain same. Now, first I will take financial capital maintenance at historical cost. My question to you all, what is the closing capital at historical cost? Already we calculated 12,000. Already we calculated. Then we will compare with it opening capital and additional capital. Opening capital and additional capital. Means can I say, if you have done single entry chapter, in single entry chapter you used to calculate profit. How used to calculate profit? Closing capital less opening capital plus additional capital minus what? Drawing. If we deduct this from this, this will be what? Profit only. Correct. That is only given. Closing capital historical cost 12,000. Less capital to maintain at historical cost. So capital to maintain historical cost. What was the opening capital? 12,000. And additional capital in this question? 0. Correct. So opening capital at historical cost? 12,000. And introduction at historical? Nil. So what is the opening? What is the capital to maintain at historical cost? 12,000. If retained profit is what? 0. Retained profit is 0. Means, just try to understand, they have sold at what, 18,000? The cost was 12,000, profit was 6,000 and this was withdrawn. 
तो रिटर्न प्रॉफिट इज जीरो तो एज पर फाइनेंशियल कैपिटल मेंटेनेंस अंडर हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट रिटर्न प्रॉफिट इज जीरो ना कमिंग टू फाइनेंशियल कैपिटल मेंटेनेंस एट करंट परचेजिंग पावर करंट परचेजिंग पावर करेक्ट तो व्हाट इज द क्लोजिंग कैपिटल ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड बट कैन यू से नाउ कैपिटल टू मेंटेन शुड बी कैलकुलेटेड करंट परचेजिंग पावर अंडरस्टूड तो यू कैन सी कैपिटल टू मेंटेन ओपनिंग कैपिटल एट क्लोजिंग प्राइस so you can see they have given what initially it was 100 now it become what 120 so what was the opening capital at historical cost what was the opening capital at historical cost 12000 into what 120 divided by what 100 means if you want to maintain that capital at current purchasing power how much capital should be maintained 14400 but you have maintained only what 12000 it means there is a negative profit therefore retain profit in this case will be 2400 2400 means if you are maintaining your capital under current purchasing power you have a negative profit negative profit retain profit 2400 have you understood this point बोलो, नॉट अंडरस्टूड नॉट अंडरस्टूड अंडरस्टूड और नॉट अंडरस्टूड मीन्स योर क्लोज जस्ट राइट योर क्लोजिंग कैपिटल इज वॉट ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड करेक्ट नाउ इफ यू जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू वन सेकेंड वॉन्ट टू परचेज इन्वेंट्री टू यूल परचेज इन्वेंट्री बेस्ड ऑन करेंट परचेजिंग पावर अंडरस्टूड करेंट परचेजिंग पावर ना तो इनिशियली Initially, it was two. The price of the inventory is two. Two into now it become one twenty divided by hundred. How much? It is two point four into six thousand. How much? Means fourteen thousand four hundred is required to purchase the inventory. But you have how much? So can you do the business once again? No, means you have a negative retain profit. Now, means can I say you should have earned two thousand four hundred as retain profit, but you have not earned that. Means you can't match with current purchasing power. Understood? At historical cost, okay, but at current purchasing power, you should maintain how much closing capital? Fourteen thousand four hundred, but you have how much? Twelve thousand. It means there is a negative profit now. Means as per current purchasing power, you should have earned two thousand four hundred more additional two thousand four hundred, but that you have not earned. Understood this point? Not understood. Not understood. One second, I will explain. One second. What I am saying, just try to understand. Initially, how much capital invested is capital account? To bank how much? Sorry, buy bank how much? Then how much profit earned? Profit earned. It is eighteen minus what twelve? Then how much drawing? Six thousand. So what is closing capital? You have a closing miss. You have a closing capital of twelve thousand. But just try to understand. Now, one second, you need to purchase inventory. If you want to purchase inventory as per current purchasing power, how much capital you should have? Means initially the price of inventory was two, but as per current purchasing power, it will become two into one twenty divided by hundred. That is what two point four. How many inventory you should purchase? Six thousand. Six thousand into what two point four is equal to fourteen thousand four hundred. Means you should maintain fourteen thousand four hundred. But you have only twelve thousand. Means you should have earned additional profit of two thousand four hundred. अरे बोल ना which you have not earned. Therefore there is a negative retained profit. Understood now? Now understood. Correct. Then coming to 
फिजिकल कैपिटल मेंटेनेंस अंडर करंट कॉस्ट फिजिकल कैपिटल मेंटेनेंस अंडर करंट कॉस्ट नाउ इन दिस थोड़ा सा थोड़ा सा आई हैव नॉट अंडरस्टूड व्हाई इंस्टीट्यूट हैज गिवन दिस आंसर Why ICI has given this answer that I have not understood. Understood. Let me give my viewpoint, then I will come to this viewpoint because I will not change the solution. Understood. As per my viewpoint, answer should be this. Closing capital is twelve thousand. Now capital to be maintained. Opening capital, how much? Opening capital we have how much? It is twelve thousand into what? What is the current price? What is the current cost? Current cost become two point five, or you can take one twenty five also. So we can do two point five or one twenty five. Let us take one twenty five. So into one twenty five divide by hundred. How much? Fifteen thousand. An additional capital zero. As per my viewpoint, answer should be three thousand negative. Correct now. This should be the answer. But here they have changed this also. Means they are calculating closing capital also at current cost. That I have not understood. They are calculating closing capital at what? Current cost. Means my answer is twelve thousand minus fifteen thousand. That is negative three thousand. But they are calculating closing capital also at what? Closing capital also at what? Current cost. Understood. So how they have calculated closing capital at current cost? Let's see. It is nine thousand. Understood. You can see this is correct. Fifteen thousand. As per my viewpoint, it is twelve thousand minus fifteen thousand. That is what three thousand negative. But they are saying closing capital should be also at current cost. How they have calculated? Let's see. You can see. Just try to understand. Closing equity at closing current cost is nine thousand. How they have calculated? Let's see. Current cost of opening stock. Oh my God. Current cost of opening stock. What was the opening stock? Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand into one twenty-five divided by hundred. So they have first calculated current cost of opening stock that is fifteen thousand. Or we can directly do six thousand into two point five. Means if you would have purchased opening stock at current cost, then it would have been fifteen thousand. Correct. Understood this point. Then closing cash after adjustment of stock at current cost means fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand minus six thousand. Six thousand is what? Six thousand drawing. Understood. So six thousand two point five. Fifteen thousand minus six thousand. This become what? Closing cash. And closing cash become what? Closing equity, closing capital. Understood. This point, what they have done? Not understood. Means what they are saying? If you would have calculated closing capital at current cost, closing capital at current cost, then what would be the closing capital? What would be the closing capital? Means simply, what they have done? He suppose six thousand. Was the unit, and it is suppose sold at two point five only. Current price. Then how much amount we have received? Minus how much drawing we have done? Means what will be the closing capital at current cost? The closing capital, sorry, closing capital at current cost would have been how much? Nine thousand. Because I am not understood. I have also not understood what they have done. Miss, I don't understand what they are doing. Are you able to understand? But this has been amended solution. 
initially they used to give this solution whatever i have done but now due to change in syllabus change in the chapter they have changed the solution also but i don't understand why they have changed the solution why they have taken this as 9000 that is not understood but even though we have not understood we need to do this only but what they have done i hope you have understood 6000 into what 2.5 minus what 2.5 na 6000 2.5 15000 minus what drawing 6000 so this become closing capital at current cost minus opening capital at current cost this will be what 12000 into what 125 divide by 100 the difference is what negative profit that is 6000 this should be maintained understood have you understood this much got it have you understood this much correct so with this i have completed all the point let me read only the last concept then entire chapter will be completed from my view point what they have given there are two concept of capital maintenance financial capital maintenance under this concept a profit is earned only if the financial amount of net asset financial amount of net asset at the end of the period financial amount of the net asset net asset means equity only so we can say the financial amount of capital at the end means closing capital at the end can we say closing capital at the end so financial capital at the end exceed the financial capital at the beginning of the period after excluding any distribution and contribution from the owner during the period financial capital maintenance can be measured in either nominal monetary units or under a units of constant purchasing power there are two ways of calculating financial profit either based on nominal monetary unit or based on constant purchasing power means based on purchasing power index got it yes sir under the concept of financial capital maintenance where the capital is defined in terms of nominal monetary unit profit represent the increase in nominal money capital over the period thus increase in the prices of the asset held over the period conventionally referred to as holding gain are are conceptually profit means any increase in the asset also will be considered as holding gain and will be transferred to what profit only normally we are using this concept got it yes sir in this one how to calculate closing capital including reserve and surplus at historical cost in this question they have not given a reserve and surplus means when i am saying equity equity will be including reserve and surplus correct so closing capital at historical cost less capital to maintain opening capital at historical cost additional capital contribution at historical cost this to minus karenge from this it will become financial profit yes sir physical capital maintenance under this concept a profit is earned only if the physical productive capacity physical productive capacity that is operating capability of the entity at the end of the period exceed the physical productive capacity at the beginning of the period after excluding any distribution to a contribution from the owner during the period under this concept when the cap under this concept when capital is defined in terms of physical productive capacity profit represent the increase in that capital over the period all price changes affecting the asset and liability of the entity are viewed as a changes in the measurement of physical productive capacity of the entity hence they are treated as capital maintenance adjustment that are part of equity and not as profit means in this case any adjustment in asset liability will not be transferred to pl that will be adjusted with capital only correct directly to equity directly to equity means that will not be a part of profit that will not be a part of profit in this case closing capital including reserve and surplus now written at current cost as per suggested solution at current cost understood at current cost understood yes sir less capital to maintain opening capital at current cost additional capital contribution at current cost if you deduct this from this this will be physical profit the principal difference between two concept of capital maintenance is the treatment of effect of changes in the prices of assets and liability of the entity 
which in case of first concept the changes in the value of SSL liability will be transferred to PL. In second cases, changes in the prices of SSL liability will not be transferred to PL. It will be transferred. It will be adjusted with what equity? It will be adjusted with equity. Understood. So with this, we have completed this chapter, full theoretical chapter. I hope you have died today. You have died. Correct. I just tried to do the same thing with me also. It is not easy to teach theoretical subject. Correct, na? I always say practical subject is more interesting to teach. Theoretical subject, all theoretical guru are guru. Correct. But I can also teach theory subject, na? Bolna rahe. I started my career with audit only. Then I understood no one is interested to. Learn audit conceptually. I started my career with audit only, but I understood students do not listen only; they want for ratification. Then I said, "No, Baba, audit I can't teach so much in detail. If I teach audit in detail, no one will come to me." Understood. Therefore, I stopped teaching audit. Correct. That was the reason. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. This question number one to question number five are very important, huh? Because question number one to question number means all these questions are very important because one question pakka may come in exam. But if you read, you will be able to understand. If you are not able to understand, you need to inform me. We'll discuss in class. There is one question from other sources which I have intensely taken in this chapter, question number two. So that I will do. Don't worry. That I will do. Don't worry. Okay. Chalega. For today, this much only. Thank you very much. We'll meet tomorrow. Till then, bye bye. Take care. Enjoy your remaining day.